Give us about two minutes, maybe two minutes, two and two, like Chuck Woolver used to say, two and two, right? Okay, so <laughs> It's a love connection. It's a love connection. So here we go. Jimmy Campbell. Who, where is he? Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. You are at the Nets. And welcome, friends, to another episode of the At the Nets podcast, powered by Texmex Productions. Working the soundboards in the back of the house are our producers, D-Mac and Dave Brick. Time to say hello to your hosts, Craig Bell and AJ Shabria, as they're about to take us through three sets of texts, talking like, and all the news as it seems, to them. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Bell. Okay, thanks to our At The Net podcast girl, that is the infamous Margot Carter, the very British Margot Carter, right? The Queen's English, right. and uh, the I guess you'd call it the King's French, too, she speaks. Yes. We'll get her to do a, uh, one en français one day. Yes, that, uh, okay. the word of the night for that gnarly introduction. Gnarly. gnarly. Or we're, maybe far out. We're, we, going, we're going a little West Coast because yeah. he's got the haircut, <laughs> and he's both East and West. As a great Jeff Spicoli would say, that's gnarly, man. <laughs> Introduction and welcome, fans of the great game. You're listening to season one. This is episode seven. This is epic. This is epic. We're with with the man right there who is known as gnarly around Good the world. Good stuff, yes. man. Uh, of Athenet Podcast with AJC. Are you AJC? Yes, sir. Welcome, and, everybody. And I'm CB1 Craig Bell. We're talking the great game of tennis as it, it seems, seems to us. us. Thanks also go out to our good amigos at Tex-Mex Productions. That would be Darian D. Mac McBrayer and Dave the Brain. Actually, I called him about 30 seconds ago, so he did help me again tonight from <laughs> back in the He's house. not here, but he's consulting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. FaceTime's really good. You know, he's it's, a man. It's, it's amazing. Uh, and, uh, well, actually, I'm moving the dials and buttons to make us sound like real people tonight. We're all three really pe- real people. We're real people. We got a great guest tonight. We got a heck of a co-host here who's also producing CB1. You don't get quite enough credit for that, so I wanted to just say, uh, uh, well done. Thank you. Also, be sure to check out our good work on Fireside, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, YouTube tonight, and Twitter also, too. We're actually on YouTube and Twitter tonight. So we're Love tw- it. We're tweeting. Are we tweeting? We are tweeting. Do you think we'll get shut down? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I hope, so, hope not. You we're going to get canceled. Oh, okay. oh, the whole series? Or, or at least just on note. We're going to be on notice because <laughs> we're going to do something a little bit too left or a little bit too right yeah. for uh, Jack Dorsey. Oh, okay. Or uh, Mark Zuckerberg or One somebody. of those. Somebody, One of those. okay. Yeah. Well, well ch- try to check us out somewhere. We'll be somewhere. And if you're female, sorry, guys, and would like to read the intro like uh, the, the infamous uh, Margot Carter, we, we, we take uh, uh, applications from any ladies, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Even non-binary, just uh, not heteronormative <laughs> males, because we got plenty of that right here. <laughs> non-binary. Are they all woke? Are they woke? Are those... Nobody's woker than me, bro. Okay, so no. is it woke, gnarly, far out? Is it, they all kind of mean the same, don't they? Okay. I'm with you. Well, speaking of gnarly and far out, our guest this evening is the great, far out, gnarly T.J. Middleton. T.J., how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the Welcome to the podcast. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. You guys are way too much fun over there. That's, that's well, we we sure. have Topo Chico. You don't know what's in our Topo Chico. Dude, so. we're sloshed. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Red so, red oh, red he has red the red solo. solo. There you go. So, yeah, we don't know what's in the solo cup. We'll keep it like that and just leave it alone, right? Uh, my money's on what? A nice, it's cool down there in Florida. It's a, Florida. what is it, a big cab? What do you got in there? A Zinfandel? Uh, it's some grape juice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Grape, grape juice. Yeah, there easy, we go. Easy grape juice. <laughs> easy. Organic. Not <laughs> fermented at all. After healthy. We're at the beach. You know, it's healthy. It's lifestyle. Always. That's right. <laughs> what we hope is, is, is a lot uh, warmer down in your neck of the woods than it is in our neck of the woods. It got cold all of a sudden here. Yeah. Really cold. I think tonight it is right at 38 degrees. I'm looking at my watch yeah. here. According to Apple, it's 38 degrees. That's not fake news, is it? No, it's a real deal. A real deal. So hopefully it's nice and uh, warm down in Alice Beach. Is that uh, the yes, area? Yes, sir, exactly. Yeah. We were, uh, hey, I played golf today. I got oh. up to about 70. I Ooh. mean, it was fabulous. I oh. mean, not my golf game, but the weather. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> it, rained, it rained on us a little bit, but it yeah. is sunny and nice and warm. I, I like being I like being in the warm weather. I don't miss, I don't miss anything. Love it, stuff. dude. When you said 70, you're talking temperature. I was hoping you were talking golf score. But no. 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 I'm training for the senior tour, but I just don't seem to don't seem to hit it straight or get it in the hole in the appropriate <laughs> amount of strokes. So 
Anyway, it's a lot of fun, and I beat it around, and my family's been in the golf business, so I love it. Oh, love that's it. great. I, I'm going for the senior putt-putt tour. Is there one? Putt-putt tour? Yeah, senior yeah. putt-putt. You know, I think I, can, I might be able to break 50, you know, 50 putts. <laughs> that clown better even... watch out. Craig Bell's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do the senior golf. What, what do you actually shoot, TJ? What do you, are you, uh, you know? Well, it depends on who I'm gambling with. Uh-huh. You know, uh, I, my handicap is 11, I guess. But uh, That's good. You know. Sometimes I can hit it good, but if you, if you get it going bad, you got to just keep it going bad to report those scores. You know. Have you, have you ever have you ever shot in the seventies? I have. Yeah, I yeah. have. What's your uh, what's your best score? I, I shot seventy four one time. That was about it. I mean, so. you know, you, you're a pro athlete. You're very very coordinated. Uh, I know your quickness probably doesn't come in handy in golf, but all the eye hand stuff, all that's right there, man. So I I have high hopes for you, and hopefully we see Middleton on the tour. Oh yeah, doubtful. Senior, I'll senior. Be on tour. the bag. I'll be on the bag. On the bag. <laughs> You'll be looping for somebody. Like it, loop it. Looping for somebody. <laughs> looping. Well, TJ, we've got our three yep. set format. CB and yep. I will take you through the first set, which is a little background. Um, CB, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think that uh, it's very nice that we've have TJ Middleton on the uh, broadcast night. Former Bulldog, right? Go dogs. Go dogs. That's Love right. It. Beat Missouri yesterday. Fired up. Right. A little SEC action right yeah. there. I still think Missouri and the SEC, that just doesn't sound right. You know, they usually, that should be a Big 8 or South, or not Southwest Conference, Big 12. A, yeah. Kind of, kind of more Midwest the of maybe, like Big 10 maybe. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I just don't think Even it is. Even Texas A&M though, it's kind of weird. I know. Man. That's strange That's too. another one. Yeah. Yeah. And Colorado over in, in the pack. Pack. Yeah. Uh, it just... Yeah, you know, maybe that all that conference realignment will get sorted out again. It'll go back to when we were kids growing up. But anyway, you were Georgia Bulldog, home of the Collegiate Tennis Hall of Fame. We go, we're gonna have to have a few stories about that. And uh, you played on the tour a little bit. Uh, played a few uh, few times out there. Won a few matches, I think, and cashed a few checks, right? And went deep on grass in dubs in mixed and men's. Yeah, we just uh, you know I cashed a couple checks. So right. I think you know I like to say that I pretty much lost in every country in the world, almost every country. So that, that's uh, quite but, an uh, honor. I've never heard that. That's pretty. Uh, that is. Well, people ask me that you played the tour. It must have been unbelievable. So fun. I played ten solid years on the tour. Thirty, thirty-five events a year. And uh, I said, yeah, it's fantastic. And I pretty much lost every week. So I accumulated, you know, 300, 350 losses. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Very people, glamorous. Yeah, people Very. don't realize that I think it's about top 50. I was doing some research one time, and I think maybe around 50, that's where you get to be 500. But everybody else that's back of the bus, whether it's singles or doubles, you're not winning. You, know, you don't have a winning percentage. You know, it's, it's really – and. It, I, does it wear on you mentally? I guess after a while, do you think like, "Gosh, I really suck" or something? You know, does it, uh, you know, mentally uh, drain you, or you just go, "Well, okay, that's just the competition," and you know, well, move that's on? The challenge, right? I mean, it's like right. a, I know, talk, a friend of mine down here, Tom Glavin, is a baseball pitcher, mm-hmm. Hall of Fame guy. And we yeah. talked about it actually just the other day, and um, he, uh, I equated it to kind of a baseball season. If you're too high or too low for any win or loss, I mean, it can really wear on you. So. Um, you just have to, you know, in hindsight, obviously now I'm older, I look back at it and think like, you know, I should have been more even keel, but you know, I'd get pissed off when I lost and I'd be super high when I won and just, oh, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, on the ATP tour, it's, it's tough. Those wins are hard to come by. You got, uh, even, even the top guys, if they win three, four, five events, I mean, that's amazing in a year. So, sure. uh, you know, if you can kind of just uh, manage those and sort of, uh, you know, just kind of go through your routine and do your stuff. I mean, you can, you know, you lose two, three first rounds in a row and it's been a month and you played three matches and you how are you going to get uh, any confidence both match play if you've played three matches in a month? So, uh, so it is a challenge, but uh, that's, it's good to have a support group and really uh, kind of keep your head up, keep positive. Hey, besides uh, uh, beating up on your coach back in NorCal, how did you get the confidence? <laughs> The confidence. Uh, well, you know, there I've had a couple instrumental people in my life, you know, different coaches and things like that throughout the years that have really helped me. And we can get into some of that. But uh, we you know, it's just uh, about self-belief, really, you know, going through the process and really uh, trying to really uh, kind of for, you know, look at yourself and visualize yourself winning and, and being able to beat anybody in the world. And, mm. and if that, even if that's not true, you got to bluff yourself into that. I think that's just so important to that, you know, that self-confidence without arrogance, really. So your arrogance from within, but, you know, your humility from with that uh, outside. So what a great answer. And, and I know, you know, what you're talking about and everything you just said 
probably rings even more true in doubles than in singles because doubles is, man, you better make that return. Otherwise, uh, the, the, there's a net player up there smacking it. Um, so there's all that pressure on you for shorter points. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny that, um, you know, some of these doubles teams, they, I think they, you see that they, they get burned out with each other or they make a change. And I think it's, it's strange because I've played with several different partners. You guys know Kyle. And yeah, Mark, Mark Kyle. And some, yeah, and some other guys. And so you're, you get to be good buddies with them and, and you, and you want to win for them as much as you do for you. And you, you just, you kind of feel bad. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, you, uh, you're kind of stressed about, you know, you know, they want to win, you know, you want to win. And it's like, Oh my God. And then, but sometimes I've gone and, you know, played really well with somebody that's just random, you know, mm. or you don't, you, not that you don't care, but you're kind of just doing your thing and playing well and, and, and you end up having a decent result, but, uh, but it is good to have that synergy and, uh, and not, there's just a fine edge there. That's remarkable. And uh, yeah, let's, why don't we move yeah. into a little background? Yeah. TJ, what got you into yeah. the great game of tennis growing up? You've lived on East Coast, West Coast, Texas, and of course, college tennis in Georgia. Tell us all about it and how you got rolling. <laughs> well, um, I was actually living in Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh huh. And uh, my folks were into golf. My dad's been in the golf industry his whole life. And they both played golf and, and I like golf. All right. But it was a little slow for like a seven, eight year old kid. And so I just ra- wandered over to the tennis courts and uh, started hitting on the wall. And a guy named Dwight Knuckles came out. He gave me a couple pointers. He was, he was kind of my first real coach. And uh, he just told me, you know, gave me a couple things and, and said, keep doing it, keep hitting on the wall. And I, I mean, I, to this day, I mean, that's the greatest thing a junior player can do is hit on the wall. If you can hit on the wall and you can do it well, you're going to be good. So uh, he would come out every, you know, few minutes and or every few hours and say, like, you know, look, you need to stop for a minute, take some water, get some lunch or whatever. But so I, and I just became possessed and it was really good energy and I could just, you know, pound the hell out of the ball against the wall. And that's kind of how it started there for me in Edmond, Oklahoma, of all places. Well, I can't believe Edmond. I didn't know. Yeah, that's right. That, right except Oklahoma you. City. Yeah, I, I was over on the west side of town. I, I knew Knucklehead. We always called him Knucklehead. Do Knucklehead. I knew Knucklehead? Oh, oh yeah. 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 And my, my dad played. Uh, he was an all-American football player at the University of Tulsa, so uh, he was an Okie. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, we had a little Oklahoma roots there. But yeah, yeah so. was, the, was a good guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, re- real nice guy. He's. Uh, I, I liked. Uh, I grew up in Oklahoma City till about 1987. I was around uh, over at Woodlake Racquet Club. Over on the Brian, west side of town. Brian Devening. Brian yeah. Devening. Right. Those guys were pretty good. You know, they had Crunch Clover Dance and, uh, sorry, oh, yeah. I'm doing some stuff on Facebook yeah. also, too. Um, yeah, Bill Romp had a great program over on the north north side of town. I was never woke enough to, to uh, go over there. You know, I couldn't test my skills. I stayed on the west side of town where all the, you know, uncool kids, you know, hung out at Woodlake. You, so. you turned out okay, pal. And I, know, <laughs> I, know. And I do know Woodlake. <laughs> Yeah. Is the caddyshack of yes. tennis in the middle of the country? Uh, that is correct. That is, <laughs> we we, we all know that. But hey, uh, we did have a comment from oh, uh, Fred, Fred Vianco says in eleven, he, you're a sandbagger, TJ. So you've already got <laughs> you've already got <laughs> Vianco's uh, you know last week's guest or two weeks ago's guest yeah. uh, throwing throwing something at you. He's throwing throwing uh, golf balls at you. Says that you're. Well, not- I, that's how I get invited to member guests. <laughs> 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 you get it, man. You get it. That's uh, right. So we, so we then, so uh, just to carry on there, so yeah. we, we yeah. ended up moving to Houston uh, after that. And, uh, you know, I was really into tennis. My mom would, uh, you know, kind of search out some of the best tennis programs and everything throughout the city. And we actually landed on uh, McGregor Park with John Wilkerson. Oh, yeah. Uh, so John, that was a really uh, influential thing in my life. Uh, John, you know, t- kind of took me under his wing. We went to the park. It was a free program. And my parents would donate to the program each month. And, um, you know, I was the only white kid in a probably 65, 70 kid program. And so, you know, you learn a lot about yourself, you know, yeah. you learn a lot about life. And uh, Zena Garrison and Lori McNeil were both in that program. And uh, we used to he used to bust our butts. So we would run around and, you know, play matches and just really it was a really um you know, exciting time for tennis and, you know, having those two players come out of there is absolutely fantastic. So everybody okay. you're mentioning, uh, you, Zena, Lori, uh, beautiful technique, uh, Lori McNeil with that serve, uh, and really her movement and everything. And you two did really well and mixed at Wimbledon one year, huh? 
Yeah, that was, you know, it took a woman to get me to the pinnacle of my career. So, you know, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Lori Mack is yeah. absolutely special. Love that girl. Yeah. No, incredible. Yeah. She's an incredible woman and an incredible uh, player, volleyer, and just a, a good all-around great gal. So we played a lot of world team tennis together as well. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, so, which, team, which team were you all on, you and Lori? We were on the Wichita Advantage, and we won. We actually won the championship one, uh, one year with uh, Buff Farrow and Julie Steven were the other yeah. two uh, players on our team. Uh-huh. And Mervin Mervin Webster was our coach at that time, and Mervin oh, has, yeah. has passed, but uh, he's a fantastic coach. He was amazing, and he coached Lori uh, to the semis of that Wimbledon. We made the finals of mixed in, and uh, I always told Lori, I, I'm sorry. She lost like 10-8 in the third, I think, oh. to – Conchita Martinez in the semis, and I was like, I- I'm just so sorry that you're so tired from playing mix that you would have won it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was was that 94? 94. Yeah. yeah, was that the year she upset Steffi Graf pretty early in the match? In I the think so. Tournament, yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, and she was playing great, and she had beaten, uh, I think it was Martina that year, and, wow. and I think Conchita played Martina. She would have, Lori had a good chance to win, so uh you know, I always, I always uh, apologize to her before she was tired from carrying. Uh, from carrying TJ. <laughs> did you get any special perks as being a Wimbledon finalist? Do you get like a membership? Do you get to go back? Or do they send you, know, have special tickets for you? You know, what, what kind of, do you have a jacket for you? They, no green jacket. No, no. green jacket? No. no. Uh, you got to win. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, no, we, uh, it actually, it made you, it gave you a, a, what's called the final eight club, as you guys know. And, uh, and it gave you tickets for life, and uh, then it also gave you a, a invitation to come back and play the 35 seniors, which uh, David Wheaton and I came back, and we won in 04 and finals 05 and 06. But uh, I actually came back the first time to play that with uh, Slobodan. I, they put me, they put you with somebody. For, He's a big, big man, Slobodan <laughs> Zivojinovic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Slobodan <laughs> thought he could serve as well as he could back in the day. No. And, Poor guy. I was like, man, uh, we played Flack and Segusa first Ooh. round, and uh, he threw in this little lollipop. He was all surf first. I was surf first. Yeah. And so he threw in this lollipop, and Flack just ripped it for a winner. And I was like, this, this is oh. <laughs> Bobo. <Trouble."> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good dude. He's a great yeah. dude. We had a lot of fun. We ended up playing um, Casal Sanchez that year on center court. Had a blast. And, uh, you know, those memories are fantastic, obviously. But, oh, it's great. Um, but, uh, but from Houston, we, I, in my junior career, we moved to uh, Northern California, in Marin County, which you know. Yeah, you Mill know. Valley, California, Redwood High, man. Redwood High. Yeah. And, uh, so I got hooked up with a guy named Gordon Smith uh, at Harbor Point Racket and Beach Club, who Gordon was a, uh, a pretty strong pro himself. And, uh, you know, Rosie Casals was out there, and she would help me. And then my formative years at 11, 12, 13 years old, and and uh, she would just, you know, she'd play with me and then Gordon give her the little wink and say, like, you know, kick his butt. Yeah, she'd go. Rip, it'd kill me. So she was still really tough when I was out there. And But having being around her and being around Vic Satius was always, we'd see Vic there hanging out at the club. And, you know, Mark Kyle and I actually, Mark was there working out with me when we were pros one, uh-huh. one time. And um, Vic looks, at it, looks over at us and he goes, you know, I invented poaching. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Vic Sage just did. You, okay. know, you can, you know, Mark. Okay. He's like, oh, you're doing a dog, dog. You're, you're Vic, that's yeah. Vic. You know, so, <laughs> it was pretty funny. So uh, those memories are really cool, and uh, to be able to, you know, do that and enjoy those people was a really uh, exciting time there in Northern California for sure, as you know. Yeah, that's a that's an amazing club you worked out at. I remember playing a few pro ams and events there. It's like, yeah, Vic lives in that condo there, and Rosie lives in this one here. And you're like, this is some sort of Hall of Fame, no kidding, right, right here. And, and speaking of Hall of Fame, let's get to your time at, at Georgia, and maybe you can even walk us through that bottom stadium, that hallway, which is the NCAA Tennis Hall of Fame. Well, Georgia was uh, definitely an experience. I. Uh, you know, got recruited there because we won the Kalamazoo doubles, mm-hmm. uh, Mike Briggs and I. And Manuel Diaz happened to be there. That was the, actually, that was the year that I beat Sampras at Kalamazoo. Awesome. Oh, uh, really? Wow. That's Sampras a big win. Like, Sampras was like nine and <laughs> I was like 16. <laughs> hey, win's a win, you know. <laughs> no, but it, we actually, uh, that was a good Kalamazoo. We, Pete was, uh, you know, whatever he was. I think he still had a two and a backhand then, and he was maybe 13 or 14, but um but I, I beat him seven, five, four, six, 18, 16 in the third wow. in five and a half hours. It was the longest match in Kalamazoo history. 
And uh, we both got uh, co Wendy's player of the day, so I got a five dollar coupon. <laughs> you got a free frosty so, and a free frosty <laughs> and a free another frosty. And, uh, but, but anyway, we uh, so we went on to win the doubles there. But Manuel, uh, Mike Briggs, and I from Southern Cal um, went on to win the dubs, and we uh, they were looking to make improve their doubles for Georgia. And so Manuel was like, you, know, you got to come take a visit. This would be fantastic. And you know, I, I went to Georgia and took a visit, and I was like, yeah, this is this is pretty sweet. I, yeah. We went to a Georgia game, and they it just so happened that Pern Force had won the NCAA for the second year in a row in 84, and um, I, was, I was coming in the fall of 85. So he, they won, he won the second NCAA in a row, and they won the team that year. And, uh, you know, the support for – and they, they had four full scholarships because they were losing four seniors. So I was like, that's my place. Like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> so, hey, uh, hey, so hey. So it was, it was pretty sweet. So we, uh, we uh, got recruited there, <laughs> had a great time. And Manuel and Dan McGill, as you guys know, is a legend. Legend. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, I can't there, believe so. you got out of Stanford. You know, Coach Gould, you know, didn't, didn't uh, come over and say hello to you or something like that. Well, he was looking at the singles guys, you uh-huh. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Coach Gould was great, but uh, once I uh, kind of learned the culture and the and the, the the history of Georgia and all that, I mean, it was just really a it was the place for me. It was a perfect spot, and uh, they were looking at uh, Tarango and uh, you know Pat Mack and all these guys. So they had already they're already set. They, right. they didn't drink out of the red solo cups over in Stanford. <laughs> they they had the wine wine coo- wine coolers red, uh, red cooler uh, red uh, solo cups at Georgia probably <laughs> right. Ones. Did they do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> they probably tailgated better in Athens as opposed to uh, you know Palo Alto. Too. And, and speaking of Athens, you guys had uh, you played singles and doubles. And your singles guys were pretty strong. I remember Chris Garner from Juniors and Al Parker. They're about your age or one year younger? They were. I was actually a grade ahead in okay. school because I, I was smart, I think, when I was a kid. But I don't really know what happened. But, um, but so I was put a grade ahead. And uh, anyway, so I, I was 17 in May, and I went to college that fall. So I was a little bit younger. Um, but uh, so I came in the class uh, a little two years before Al. But um but it was uh, it was a good class, and we had four freshmen that year. But then, uh, you know, our sophomore year was our really our banner year when uh, we won the NCAA. Eighty-seven, and, you won the whole thing. Eighty-seven, we won the whole thing. It was uh, really remarkable that uh, we uh, played USC, a USC team that was thirty-two and zero in this in the, uh, through the year, and we played them in the semifinals, and uh, it kind of came down to a you know four-all match when they played that format in yeah. college. Trey mm-hmm. Carter and I played Luke Jensen and Eric Amon and West. Eric, yeah, punched out Luke Jensen. All right, you got him. Incredible, man. <laughs> Dual hand and, Luke. and Eric, not so shabby either. No, I know. Yeah. yeah, Eric was solid. He had qualified for the Olympics. I mean, these guys were. I played Eric Amon at number six uh, when we played them. It was six, unbelievable. yeah, yeah. We right. played, so we played that match that day. So we're we're up three two in Athens, and there are probably six thousand people there, and I'm the only match on. So I'm down five four, and he's serving for the set. Everybody, the everybody's yeah. like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and they, they all kind of come down to the court, and they start going TJ, TJ. <laughs> so I, I, I break him to go five all, uh-huh. and they're just they're going absolutely bananas. Were you, were you doing and this? I, were you, were you then, like holding on to the racket like this? Oh, I was just I was freaking out, and uh, and then uh, I proceeded to lose seven five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we were three all going into doubles, and then. Uh, uh, Trey and I uh, ended up squeaking it out against Luke and uh, Eric to win 5-4, and then we beat UCLA the next day uh, 5-1 in the singles because of a – well, we played well, but uh, Dan Naherney hurt his knee that time. Uh-huh. We had a nice we had a nice time. It's uh, Buff Farrow, who played number two, is a good buddy of mine. Um, he uh, he Unfortunately, he double-faulted on team match point for us to win the NCAAs. Uh-huh. And so there's there was a there's a big – right when he double-faulted, Stephen Enix, who was playing him, raises his hands to win to win the championship and uh there's a big ncaa banner in the background and uh and so they're going crazy but then they used it for a promo ad for uga sports from then on so every time i'd see it i'd call up buff i'd be like hey man you're on tv today they <laughs> get so pissed at me but i'm sure man we're all good buddies but uh yeah, yeah they had a great team pat galbraith played number five for them and uh, Brian Garrow I played at number six when I when we won the NCAA so um so it was a lot of fun and uh, 
with Dan McGill, it was really great. I had three years with Dan and one year with uh, with Manny. Manny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Coach McGill was a legend. You know, he would seem like a great guy. That uh, I loved his uh, I loved his accent too, and he didn't pronounce the letter R. Right, oh, he yeah. had that Georgia sort Georgia. of drawl. Yeah. Georgia. <laughs> Beautiful draw. Yeah. Hey, take us yeah. through that I'll Hall you, of Fame. Yeah, I'll go ahead. You, Sorry. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you one thing real quick. Yeah. Um, so Coach McGill was uh, – he was a legend, you know. I mean, these, everything, everything that we ever thought about or did, if you ask any Georgia guy, they have, um, you know, their own unique – every different generation has a different way to impersonate him. <laughs> and so they have their own unique way. But he always had an effect on you because you – remembered what he said you know you, you know, he'd be he'd be on your butt all the time but he was so supportive at the same time but he had the same pep talk for every single guy we'd get in a little group and we'd have all of our all six guys and he'd go one by one by one by first you know and so every time the exact same thing he said well tj you got a great opportunity to improve your itka ranking today itka <laughs> We want to hit most of the balls to the weakest side. Which side is the weakest side, Manuel? The backhand. The back we want to hit most of the balls to the backhand. We want to be in a hurry to get to the ball, not in a hurry to win the point. Uh-huh. And we want to call them fair out there, but let's certainly not cheat Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Let's go get them. Go dog. I love it. <laughs> Every single time. It was unbelievable. So you just had it down by heart. You know, that's, that was it. But, uh, he was <laughs> He was a great man, and uh, you know we, you know the things he taught us were fantastic. So. Well, here we are, thirty-two years later, and your impression is dead on, TJ. That was great. That's pretty good, spot on, right there. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. At, at first, it reminded me yeah. of Fred Viancos talking yes. about Tut Bartson yes. at TCU, but then he did the voice, right? Right? Yes. yes. Like yeah. TJ really knocked it home for us. That he, was good. he had the draw, you know, the, the draw to draw. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, yeah, we, you know, it's fantastic. But Tut, what a legend! A legend too. Yes. Legend too. To your point about the. Uh, Hall of Fame. It's a fantastic oh, yeah. thing. And uh, Coach McGill would, uh, you know, in hindsight, you know, I, I treasure every moment that he would walk me through it, you know, because he'd go, well, there's A plus Mesa when I came back to the, and there's a racket that I got over and, the, and I'd be, I'd be like, ah, oh. you know, you've got to stop, you know, and <laughs> all this stuff. But, uh, but in, in hindsight, it's like, ah, it was just legendary. And he, he just really, the house that Dan built and, uh, we uh we did he did build that house and funny oh, yeah. enough after that NCAA we beat USC they started rotating the tournament because we had too many crazy Georgia fans if you know what I mean yeah Just yeah going absolutely no, nuts it should year. always be in Athens Georgia I mean the way that it's the he brought that it wasn't a tournament it was an event and that guy he understood what college tennis was all about and. Uh, you know, it was just a legendary setting, kind of like the Masters, yeah. and to be in Athens and to be a part of that event. I mean, there's that's you can't recreate that anywhere in the United States. And I think it should always be, you know, in Athens, Georgia. Whether you know you all have the home court advantage or not, I mean, what you do typically, I mean, that's that's definitely you got six thousand screaming fans. I doubt there was, you know, one fan that was for any of those other schools, but you know, it was, it's just such a special place. I mean, place. occasionally yeah. you'd get an LSU person or a Florida or somebody driving in. But One. it was basically a lot of black and red <laughs> yes. in that. I, I've been there. And, hey, have you seen the new stadium? Because it used to be Henry C. Field was those three courts, and then the other three courts were over there. Have you seen it now? I haven't been there to see it. I've seen a lot of pictures from alumni and all that, and it looks fantastic. It's looking pretty professional, yeah. They, 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 don't, they don't invite the old guys back and, or hit the alums up for some uh, a couple of bucks here and there? No, they hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> they have no problem finding your address, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, my son has actually took a job there, so uh, he's 23. So uh, he's he's working in Athens now. So I got a uh, different reason to get up there. So it's, oh, uh, it's great, exciting. and yeah. it's not too far for you being in the Panhandle, yeah. right? Yeah, it's about five to Atlanta from here. Five and, hours uh, driving. Uh, yeah, yeah, another hour and hour and fifteen to oh, Athens good. or so. So tell, tell us about what the college experience also was like at University of Georgia. Did you go to any football games? You know, I think you remember never, never, never went uh, to the Florida Georgia game, the biggest. Uh, and and yeah. off sports for a moment. <laughs> what about going to the 40 Watt Club to see one of those amazing Athens bands? You were there in the heyday, yes. the late 80s to early 90s, right? Uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, we. Uh, Gosh, there were so many things to do. I mean, I, I think I saw a band like seven nights in a row one time. I mean, it was it, we kind of took it for granted. Widespread Panic is amazing. They've, oh, Widespread you know, Panic was there. I, I they forgot that. For free in Legion Field, and uh, you know, REM would show up wherever, and Driving and Crying played you know multiple times, and Kill Kenny Cats, like you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, it's 
it was really the mecca of music. And, we, you know, we really one of the funner things was we had a couple of buddies that have bands or, you know, garage bands and they had these storage units and you'd go and just like sit in there and just listen to them jam and have a beer or whatever. And it was really cool. And I was a, I was a Sigma Chi at Georgia and uh, it was cool. We had, uh, they were called uh, Mr. Crow's Garden. And, Black uh, Crows, they became, yeah. they were the Robinson yeah. Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had them and uh, they played there. And uh, then we had, we actually got shut down. Our, we were on double secret probation. <laughs> we, had the, we had the flock of seagulls came to, to, to play and yeah. our, the fire marshal came and shut us down before they played. And, oh, yeah, flock of seagulls. Oh, man. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah the big cool. pompadours. Did you yeah. have one back then? You had good hair back I in the day. Mullet, more of a mullet, I think. <laughs> then, but um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Athens was uh, a cool city and. Uh, you know, doing the fraternity experience, I think it was really cool and uh, really fun. And then it was fun to have a, uh, those, that support as well. They'd come out to the tennis matches and things like that. I mean, for a regular dual match, sometimes we'd have, you know, 1,500, 2,000 people, which was really cool. And um, we, we actually, uh, they used to, I played number four my senior year when we played Stanford in the finals in 89. And uh, all my fraternity brothers were lined that, that second tier cord. They were all lined the cord. They're all ready. And I'm playing Alex O'Brien, who you guys know. <laughs> yeah. From Amarillo. There. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I'm playing Alex and I win the first game. I'm like, come on. You know, this is great. I'm, I'm a badass. And he, he beats me one and up. And, then, <laughs> and, and they, and they were like, you suck. <laughs> They're giving me a hard time. All this stuff. So, uh, but anyway, that was Alex was really coming along, and uh, he, he I think he won the singles, doubles, and team the next year. He was really triple playing crown. Well, so. Yeah, yeah, he became an outstanding player. Yeah, yeah. you put yeah. you set him on his career. See right there, he. Yeah. Yeah, I think I springboarded. You know, <laughs> yeah, you wrote you wrote O'Brien's ticket to Davis Cup and all four slams. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, that's, that's great. Then after, should we go uh, maybe a little pro tennis? You Let's know? do it. Let's yeah. go to the okay. tour um, yeah. after Georgia. You turned pro right uh, when you graduated, right? Well, yeah, and I, I wanted to graduate, you know, so I, I finished my tennis in 89, and then I had uh, that extra football season, you know, to get my degree. Fall, so, yeah, uh, finish so up. I, right. Yeah, so I finished up in March of 90. We were on the quarter system, and uh -huh. so then I went out on, on the tour, and uh I think I, the first tournament, I think I played the 256 round of qualities in Lawrence, Kansas. And uh, I may, I think I won nine matches. I made the semis of the tournament. I got a special exempt for the next week. And, uh -huh. you know, I was sort of on my way. I made semis of the first two tournaments and made, uh, I don't know, got like 10 or 11 points. Or and this there. was singles or dubs? Singles. Yep. And so I got, you know, in about a year, I got up to like 90 in the world and doubles and probably 200 in singles. And uh, then it was a question of, uh, you know, do you play uh, the show in doubles or do you go to uh, Botswana, you know, wherever <laughs> and play uh, challenger in singles? So I played, uh, you know, as many big tournaments as I could. You know, it's a lot better to be in Palm Springs than it is in Indonesia or something like that. But, uh, but uh, and so I consequently, my singles ranking uh, suffered. I lost, I think, like six times last round qualities and, but doubles, I stayed up in there and I, I, you know, for, you know, the extended period of time and got to about 50 something in the world. So I played, uh, I played a lot of doubles and played quarterfinals at the Australian Open and uh, with Garnett in 93 it was really fun. And uh, then making the finals of Wimbledon 94 was really a, a highlight for us. And, uh, and it was really a really neat experience. But, uh, but uh, my singles ranking knows it was strange that, you know, you, you just think that you looking back, you think you, gosh, I should have won more. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, <laughs> but it's like, I should have won more, you know? So uh, it's a little strange, but uh, so my singles uh, points had fallen off and I was in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, and I was still in the doubles in the show and playing all the majors and stuff. And, uh, but I had, you know, signed in for qualities for singles and I didn't get in. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go the next morning and I'll just whatever, show up if somebody doesn't, play then i'll get in so i go in the morning st petersburg you know crappy conditions the whole deal didn't eat breakfast didn't no shower no nothing just uh, showed up whatever i get in i'm in the first round i played yeah i can't remember who i played but i was down a set and a break just like totally flailing and then i slapped a couple winners came back ended up winning that match winning the next two matches and qualified i played and then i played thomas mooster first round wow this is 95 i have zero points so this is 95. So And I, Thomas I, Muster is uh, top three and going to be number one later that year. 
Yeah, he's six in the world at that time. Hmm. And so he's, uh, so I asked my buddy, Brett Garnett, and I said, so what do you think? And he goes, well, he goes, if you want to make it look good and like lose like four and four, he goes, then rally with him. He goes, if you want to win, he goes, do you want to win? I was like, yeah, sure. I want to win. He goes, then don't ever let him have a rally. He goes, if you're down 40 love, he goes, just slap it. In the Go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't give him any, any rhythm. So I was like, okay. And so I'm ready to play and I'm sitting there like trying to save my energy. And there's Mooster over in the corner. He's, he's been jumping rope for like 30 minutes. He's full <laughs> lather. He's just like a freaking animal, you know? And uh, so we come out on the court and I, and I did the same exactly what Brett said. I, you know, I got up six, five in the first set. And all of a sudden I just chipped a couple balls in and I smarmled a couple balls in and he ended up missing a couple cause I gave him no rhythm and I ended up beating him five and three. And then Unreal. I, yeah, and then the next round I beat Andre Cherkasov six three in the third, and I lost in the quarters. But, but I ended up getting you know a bunch of points, and all of a sudden I was ranked you know three hundred again. But Mooster, you know the, the best part about it is Mooster was six in the world, and he was so pissed off he lost to me. He won forty matches in a row, including the French <laughs> Open, became number one. You once, well, once I again, told him, I said you're welcome. Right? Yeah, you you sparked O'Brien, yeah. and now you sparked Mooster to number one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, I'm a facilitator. What can you say? <laughs> and that's why you're a coach now. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great, exactly. man. Yeah, I thought you were going to have Coach McGill give you a call or something like that. Go, <laughs> well, let's see there, TJ. Let's see. <laughs> hey, TJ, um, TJ of 2020 is 50-something years old, early 50s. What would you say to TJ Middleton of 1994, where he was struggling and in the show in dubs, but not in singles? What would you tell that TJ right now? Because you know a lot now. Well, I would have told him to divorce his wife quicker. <laughs> um, let me think. What else? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, you know, this is reality. Yeah. TV, isn't it? <laughs> it is. No, no, no. I, I think it's, um, it was, it was about the process. You know, I think when I was, when I was playing, I sort of was not unwilling, but I was a little bit concerned about like change. You know, I didn't go back to the drawing board a little bit. Like you look at Tiger Woods or something like he reinvents himself. They reinvent their swing. They yes. do, you know, little things and they consult different people and stuff like that. I, I think I was less willing to do that and really take, a, a, you know, under, trust somebody else to like say, hey, you know what, this is what you need to do. You need to improve your backhand better. Or you need to hit your top swing backhand better. Or, just understand, you know, the footwork or the little nuances of it all. Now that as a teacher now, it's really, you know, you guys know, I mean, if you, if you have to teach somebody something, you absolutely have to know what you're talking about to teach that. So, I mean, I see a lot of tennis coaches that that's the frustration. They really don't know what they're doing. And so they're trying to teach somebody something and it's like, it's not working. So, mm. um, you know, being a teacher, I've learned more. I hit the ball better and cleaner now than I ever have. Obviously, you can't move around as well, and you're not as, you know, as, <laughs> as mm. agile. But, uh, but, yeah, I think going back to that, I mean, taking the time to sort of, you know, take that off season and, and, you know, regroup and understand, you know, how to improve, I think, a little bit more rather than chasing every point that you can get. Does that make sense? It does. That's a critical thinking sort of answer. Uh, that was deep. Thank you. We have a good question. Oh, from Nick, Nick Smith, Smith is always good for a couple of good ones. He's, he's a, he's in really your opinion, yeah. in your opinion, TJ, how has the game of doubles changed, and how would you have done with today's style of dubs? That's a good uh, question. You know, yeah. it's funny. That, well, it's funny that uh, you know guys stay back sometimes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it really the first guy I ever saw do that was Jordi Arrese. Spanish I, guy, yeah. Yeah, I'm playing somewhere in Europe, I can't remember, and uh, I hit a serve, and I think I was playing with Garnett, and uh, and he just, I was playing on half the court, and he just hit a forehand by me that I couldn't even get. I was like, what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> he stayed back and just ripped it for a winner. Um, no, I think it's just, uh, it's different nuances. I think guys are bigger now a little bit, and uh, a little bit, uh, you know, the nutrition and the technology is a little bit quicker. I think there's subtleties that you can still play small ball, you know, have a little chip here and there. I mean, the first serve is so key, but uh, fundamentally, I think that uh, you can have that variety. Uh, I thought the Bryans did a fantastic job of their longevity. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah. They're 40 something years old. Still amazing. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm, I'm sad that they're, that they hung it up, but, uh, but gosh, what a great career. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, the, uh, the ability to uh, kind of, understand the game and 
and you know return of serve is obviously key but i think softening the game a little bit too is really good i think guys are going too big a lot I and mean, you can use the lob a little bit better uh, like the, right off the return even yes yeah. exactly i really think that's kind of a missed opportunity sometimes and obviously it's got to be well placed and all that good stuff but uh it's you know i think there's some different nuances to be able to to kind of hang in there with and not have traditional serve volley every time and uh, you know be uh you know kind of book doubles sort of thing yeah well um i want to go to the second set and in the second set probably in the middle of it we'll have a yeah. great question from fred Viancos, our mutual friend and the s- chief operating officer yeah. of the whole uspta so we're going to get to his question in a minute or two he's still watching but uh, I can't he's believe he's with us he's man <laughs> he's, a, he's a lifer yeah. we love that guy uh um, second set that. yeah second set brought to you by master systems courts we love yeah. our friend Br- blair Descray, and he's been a sponsor of our podcast for uh uh, uh, 70 episodes, Probably right? So. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a good man. Looks great. So uh, go look that up if you're in the need of not just tennis courts, pickleball, you- basketball, sport courts, uh, Gaga ball. Right. And uh, I Ga- think you mentioned Gaga ball. Gaga ball is I've so never, fun. Have you heard of Gaga, Gaga ball? ball? Yeah, I don't want to. Kind of know. a it's you're, it's like MMA because uh, you're in an octagon, but yeah. it's not like MMA because you don't use anything but your legs, and it's a, a volleyball, kickball, soccer ball. Oh, okay, and that, kids that was, love it, and people my age love it because maybe it keeps me from being really slow. Right, what, it's just good for the feet. That's so that's Gaga ball. Gra- that's what we call my grandmother. Gaga. Gaga. <laughs> are you guys are you guys playing pickleball there? Oh, we yeah. like pickleball. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, what about paddle? You guys play some paddle? Or? Yeah, uh, up here it's Either. pronounced paddle, and I've I, in Spain and France they pronounce it padel. Is that the one you're talking about with the foam racket uh, paddle? Yeah, and then also I played a little bit of platform as well. I thought it was pretty cool. Platform uh, is cool. Is that, that uh, which one? That's the, the one course. with the chicken wire. Chicken wire. Elevator court. Elevated court. I love that one because you. It, it requires a little uh, not dyslexia, you know, a little spatial. <laughs> so it a pushes. Geometry, baby. <laughs> a little geometry, a little squash, a little angles, and it pushes a part of brain, our, our brains that aren't really that alive in tennis. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So Master yep. Systems Forks Courts, yep. they build all that stuff. Um, our good buddy Blair D. And let's, him up. let's roll into yep. our second set, which we sort of uh, internally entitle um, Current Projects and Future Projects. What are you doing now in Alice Beach, gorgeous part of Florida? Well, Alice is, uh, as you guys know, a super uh, beautiful town. Oh, yeah. It's just absolutely incredible. Uh, everything's white. It's uh, just a just an incredible mecca of just wellness and beautifulness, and it's right on the water. And I'm uh, the director at Zuma, which is the wellness center there. So uh, we uh, we have uh, you know all the spa treatments, uh, TRX, yoga, boxing, tennis, obviously uh, beautiful swimming lap swimming pool, and mm. a, a, like a smoothie cafe and courtyard. So it's really an amenity oh. for the homeowners and guests. And uh, it's a beautiful spot. There's uh, Alice is a, uh, uh, they call it life defined. I mean, it's really, it's one of those places that you come and everything's taken care of. You really don't leave the area. You go to Rosemary Beach or, or down the way and whatever, and have some uh, dinner or something. But it's really just that 30A uh, is the highway going through there. So 30A is really, a, it's a lifestyle and it's a, it's a beautiful spot. So my wife, Courtney Chapman Middleton and I, we, uh, we work together there at the at the facility, and we teach only um, you know homeowners and rental guests, gotcha. and, you know, some occasional VIPs or whatever that come in town. So they want it to be really exclusive, which it is. And it's we have two red clay courts, and they're going to build two more oh. and, and some pickleball. So, but the red clay is beautiful. Oh, I love the red. I mean, clay in general, but it happens to be red. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, is there a bed and, and breakfast uh, at your house? Do we have a bed and breakfast that we can come stay? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got a Murphy bed right over here. Oh, all right. All right, there we go. So I'll, I'll be there that. in about 12 hours. I'm coming down yeah. right now. We don't. We have the Murphy bed. It's not too comfortable. We don't want people to stay too long. Yeah, yeah, no. The guests like <laughs> fish uh, begin to stink on the third day. So Murphy bed is good. Right. Good yeah. for us. Right. Good, fine yeah. for us. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there. Um, I, I love that you have uh, walked right really into something that Fred said, and we'll get yeah. to his question in a minute, but something that Fred said two weeks ago on our show was that the modern uh, U.S. Pro Tennis Association member is not not just often a uh, head pro of tennis or director of tennis. He is director of tennis and fitness or aquatics or racket sports. And here you are. It's tennis as well as wellness, fitness, everything, right? 
Absolutely. It's, uh, and it's exciting, you know, I mean, to really expand your horizons like that, it, it, it gives you an opportunity, I think, to uh, enjoy some of the administrative side and the kind of the creative side to be able to develop interesting programming in different avenues, as well as being on the court and not, um, you know, spending 40 plus hours or something on the court like that. I mean, it, you know, it gives me a good balance to be able to do that. And our, we have a daughter named Lila uh, that she's just turned 11. And big, a, big, well, high ranked 12 and under kid, right? She's cracking it, man. She's really doing good. And uh, so we'll see, you know, we're saving money for therapy for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw her walk uh, by. She walked by about 10 minutes ago. I was waving at her. Was that Courtney you walked by? Blonde was girl? Courtney? Or was that, that your was, daughter? No, that was, that was Lila. That was Lila. Okay. okay, that was a kid. He got it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Courtney, winningest all-time SEC Ole Miss player, right? She is. She yeah. was. Most wins all-time at, uh, SEC Ole Miss uh, MVP there and top 200 women's tour player. And she's just a really fantastic, you know, Pretty good wife. Great, best second <laughs> wife I've ever had. In life. I love uh, it. But, uh, but no, she's she's great. She's uh, she really. I, I can if I if I can digress, I'll give you a quick story about. Sure, her. please, please, please. Um, yeah. So, um, so we're playing at Wimbledon, playing uh, the Woodies in the finals of Wimbledon. Um, court one, this the other the other stadium court. Uh huh. Um, so we play them, and we're up. I think we're up a break in the third. David Wheaton and I are up a break in the third, and. Uh, you know, things are going along good. You know, I'm seeing, you know, geez, I'm going to win the title. I'm going to another title. I'm pumped. You know, we, this is 06, I guess. Uh-huh. And uh, so I'm there and she's sitting in the stands. She's got the stoic look on. You've got her glasses on looking all Vogue and stuff. And uh, so I'm there and I, you know, we're up a break. I think two, one, three, one, I think. And uh, it's like love 30, right? So this is a good opportunity. You, know, you could double break in the third to win Wimbledon. You know, this is it. So I move around and I just have this vision of what I want to do. I get the serve. I move around. I try to rip it up the line yeah. for winter. I miss it by like, you know, six inches or something. Uh, I had this vision, you know, I'd, I'd hit that same shot before like previous year or something. I just had this vision. So I miss it. We go on, we go on to lose seven, six in the third. Wow. So we, we come into the locker room, you know, everything's whatever. It's, it's fun. You know, we had a great event and all that stuff. We're having a glass of champagne. We into our tux for the Wimbledon ball and the whole deal. I'm fired up, you know, it's okay. Having a good time. So I walk out to the, you know, the green, the garden right there with the, the, the Wimbledon, wherever the players area. And she looks right at me. She doesn't say one word. And she goes, do you think you should hit that ball cross court? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that just says it all right. Tough there. crowd, Courtney. Wow. Yeah. Cookie, baby. She's a tough cookie. Tough one. No, That's hilarious, no, man. She's fantastic. She's an amazing coach, lefty, and just, uh, you know, does wonders for all her clients. And uh, obviously for our daughter, she's fantastic, too. You so. two both, not just providing. I know everybody talks about the, the genes that you provided, but the coaching you've provided her. Uh, that kid's going to be really good. I'm, uh, I, I'm laughing about your therapy crack, but I can't wait to see this kid in 14s and 16s in, in nationals. TJ was thinking about this, I think. Weren't you thinking about this? He was about ready to go. <laughs> I love it. I he love he it. was about ready to just, he was thinking right there. Man, you then, know, then your wife cracks on you like, <laughs> you think you should have hit that shot cross court? I was like, Man. <laughs> uh, she, uh No, it's great. But, yeah. you know, recently we've, uh, you know, we like to get out of the comfort zone a little bit. And we know that we don't know everything. But, you know, obviously when you're 25, you know everything. And now that <laughs> you're older, you know nothing. So, um, so what we we've done is we've been going down to Lake Worth in South Florida with uh, uh, Roger Anderson and Shawnee uh, Sheepers. Is his wife Shawnee? Shawnee, Shawnee Sheepers as his wife. Uh, she was top thirty player, and Roger was a great coach. Coached uh, uh, Schneider and uh, several other uh, yeah. players. But uh, and he was a very good player, obviously as well for Georgia Tech. But they have a beautiful facility called Team Anderson Two Court Facility, and uh, Lila's been going down there, and Courtney, and I've been down there a little bit too. Um, yeah. And they train like the you know probably eight eight to ten kids only, all top level kids, and it's really amazing. Is They're that really uh, Shani? Is Chanel Sheeper is the South African player? Yeah, 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 brilliant player. I, I, she was uh, maybe better than top thirty for a bit. She's amamazing. Yeah. Very yeah, good, very great. good. But they, they're the real deal. They really, uh, they worked, I think they worked with USDA for quite a while and then they've uh, kind of branched out on their own. They bought this uh, kind of farm and their houses there. They have built two beautiful, like, 
you know, they're Indian Wells, you know, level type courts, and uh, they have a great farm there. It's it's fantastic. So. That sounds can, awesome. Can you say her name? I, I never thought I, I never thought I'd be paying for coaching. I thought, yeah. okay. <laughs> but Lila is that good. That's right, right. and that worth it. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'm not that good. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Too humble, TJ. Yeah. Well, let's get to Fred's question, yes. which was great. Um, uh, I, I we want to ask you, or he'd he'd like to ask you. What are some lessons that you learned from the tour that you use in your practice today, whether you're teaching the top level juniors like Lila or uh, some recreational players right at Zuma? Uh, Well, I think I've learned that um, no two players are the same. You know, I really have. I mean, just uh, this there's fundamental things that are that are fundamental, obviously, Mm -hmm. that are really, you know, what you need to do, how to hit the ball. But everybody's just a little bit different. I think, you know, if you look around at a, let's say a Fabrice Santoro versus a, a Gasquet or something like that, they, all these players are completely different and they hit the ball in a different way. And so I'm just trying to, you know, kind of understand what I'm dealing with in terms of whether it's like a, a new player or an advanced player, just to really kind of uh, be able to, sort of uh, enhance what they're doing. You know, if it's a new player, it's they're not going to be great if they practice once a week or they come once a week. I mean, it's just you got to you got to practice, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, and, and understanding the process and, uh, you know, look, trying to educate people on, uh, you know, what it really what it really takes to kind of be proficient at what you're doing. You don't have to be the top level pro or anything like that. But uh, to have some fun with what you're doing, I think, is really the key. And uh and uh, these people that take three balls and they go out on the court and they're hitting, they're picking up the balls the whole time. And that's not fun. You know, <laughs> yeah, let's just... keep, let's keep the ball in play a little bit. You know? uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if that answers this question. That's a, that's a that's great a answer. Question. And I could feel it. It was from here. Let's get to Femrite's question. Yeah. This guy and I bonded. We only recently met, but uh, I, know Femrite. I, I figured you would. Yeah. He's funny. He yeah. and I have bonded on yeah. not tennis, but comedy. And this is not that funny a question. This is more of a substantive question. Kind which, of along the same which line. Which belongs that, in the second set. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, CB. No, no. He just asked, you know, do you enjoy basically all types of, of lessons, or do you, would you rather do more advanced level or more maybe the beginner level? What, what do you, where do you see yourself as a coach? Because some specialize. I like recreational players. I really don't. I'm not really an advanced guy. I and mean, I'll just say that. I mean, I really like more the entry level. I like that kind of player versus more i wouldn't be good on the tour i would not be good in in tj's uh, corner i would not be something that uh, would be i'd be kind of nervous so tj so question from brett femright what do, what do you enjoy do you enjoy all levels or more like uh you know your daughter in that kind of setting uh, would you say well first of all i love we love brett yeah. courtney and i and lila we, we know brett and he's a, he's a great guy and sweet sweet <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. Shout, out to, shout out to brett he's yep. a good dude love that um, guy um, you know, the, the answer is all of them because the one, only thing that I really look for is the desire to do it, to get better, to enjoy it. I mean, if, if I'm trying the, at somebody at the highest level, trying to tell them something, they're bitching and moaning about it. I was like, I don't want to teach them. I mean, yeah. There's the same thing with somebody that's a new player. I mean, if they're willing to, to try it and to really kind of, uh, work at it, I think that's fantastic. And it's not like a work every single day or something like that, but if they're out there on the court and they really want to, um, you know, improve. And I, I love giving somebody like a, just a little niche or a little nuance here and there, and they can really just, ah, it just makes a difference. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Just hold it a little, hold it a little looser or, you know, whatever. Watch, yeah. watch the ball. It's amazing. If you watch the ball, it's amazing. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I really, I enjoy every, every type of player and, uh, and, it, and it's and it's really interesting uh, that he asked that because uh, in the resort uh, business, you see you don't see like the regular lessons every single week, you know. So you're looking at a, a brand new person, maybe not brand new, but a new person pretty much every single week mm. that, um, you know, is coming for a vacation or they're a resort guest or whatever. They're a homeowner, but they don't come here all the time. So. So it's kind of a new challenge each time. And then they'll come back and say, well, my pro in Dallas said that I was doing this. And I was like, okay. You're the guy that screws everybody up. You know, when they come back, you know, I got to put, uh, yeah, that TJ guy told me to, you know, hold a uh, semi-Western grip when I hit a backhand volley, you know, like that. Absolutely. Right. Like and that. I, right. Uh, there we go. 
go. Francois Durr with the, uh, the, finger. the thumb and, and the, the finger. finger on the forehead. Right. Uh, <laughs> CB1, you could be, yeah, you could coach any level. He really okay. could. You, you, all, all it is is some mentality. You yeah. got the mentality. You, you, you say the right things. You know, hey, you know, you, should, you, know, you got to do, you got to hit it in the court more. You got to hit it in the court more. The Dan McGill. What's the weakness, AJ? Say, say it what's with an weak- accent. Well, <laughs> well, what's the weakness there, AJ? Oh, yeah. oh, oh this guy. <laughs> it moves the ball's the weakest side. That's right. well, what's weak. the weakest side, Manuel? Well, that's yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I, right. I love you want to be in a hurry to get to the ball, but not a hurry to end the point. Right. I love that line. I'm going to start. Yeah, you you yeah. know I'm going to use that tomorrow, right? It's gold, that. Jerry. It's gold. It's gold. That. It's gold. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's stick with the second set a little yep. bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about it. First of all, do we have another question? No, I think that was it right let's at, go at with, the moment. Um, let's go with something that's um, kind of on our script is uh, yep. the people you uh, get to teach. Um, how many of them are regulars and how many of them, as you said, are kind of in and out of town? Uh, it's probably, I'd say, 50-50. There, uh, we have... Uh, we have some regular homeowners that are here and I enjoyed, you know, teaching them. And then the, you know, it's kind of feast and famine as well. So I mean, and during seasonal. The, yeah, seasonal. And during the Thanksgiving week, for example, or coming up to Christmas here, there's it's the occupancy rate is, is really high at Alice beach. So we'll be able to, uh, you know, get out there and grind and it'll be really, really good. And, uh, and then other times are, it's just more mellow and we work with Lila and that kind of thing. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, but it's good. It's really uh, and with our limited ability to uh, and kind of with COVID too, they really didn't want to do too many larger clinics and things like that. So um, we've been doing trying to keep our distancing and all that and uh, you know appropriate. And um, so we really just do privates and semi private small groups, things like that. So um, it's a very boutique type experience, and we you know we just like to really. Um, provide a really you know a top quality unique experience for all of our guests yeah and you mentioned um uh, sometimes it's nice to do the administrative stuff i assume you do a lot of the the marketing in, in the local area for your place um or even within within the home ownership uh tell us about current projects and future projects and how things have changed with covid and how you're able to take advantage or uh or meet those needs uh, well, we're just, uh, we have a marketing department, you know, that uh, kind of handles most of that stuff. And, uh, you know, real estate sales have been fantastic yeah. down this area because I think people are wanting to uh, be a destination they can get to easier. There are a lot of Dallas folks that have been down here, a lot of Atlanta, New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, there's a ton of Baton Rouge guys that I've really gotten to know. Baton Rouge people are, have been really sweet to us and uh, we have a lot of friends there. But, uh, but we, uh, you know, 50% built out. So right now the real estate sales are really have been off the charts for the last several months. And uh, we're looking to put in a couple more courts, probably a little pro shop, things like that, uh, pickleball courts, and uh, hopefully a golf bay. You know, we don't have a golf uh, situation at Alice Beach. We don't have a course. So we, uh, I've really been uh, kind of pushing the fact that we, you know, if we had uh, some golfing bays, probably selfishly, but, uh-huh. uh, but uh, so, and, you know, inclement weather, things like that, we could get in there and really, you know, you could play on the virtual stuff and play, you know, Pebble Beach or, you know, St. Andrews, something like that, where you yeah. have a bay doing that. But here it's all uh, at Alice Beach, it's sort of all about, the amenities and what your you know life defined is what they always the tag phrase so yeah. life defined and uh, you know the lifestyle is really what people are looking for and now with virtual schools and things the distancing and stuff i think that's really where we're kind of headed and and i feel like it's my job to really kind of you know push that you know at least consult on that and really kind of you know not that everyone listens to me but uh you know uh, i think we're moving in the right direction and having having our amenities kind of really up to par with any of the top level resorts in the world so has has uh covid actually helped your business i mean in some respects like i've been busy at the club here in dallas have you all been busy at lessons people playing you know tennis has been a, a fairly uh, good sport to participate in as far as covid so have you all been experiencing that i know florida's what like texas fairly similar we're more pro business as well so uh, as long as we wash our hands and practice social distancing then you know it it seems like we're okay to uh to, to go after it. So what's, what's your what's your all's opinion uh, with with Alice Beach? Are you all busy? 
I agree there. Uh, we are, we're, um, we have, uh, you know, you saw in like, what is the, the, the most safe thing for social distancing. Yes. This was like number one or two yep. or something yeah. like that. Yep. So, uh, and then just with the, uh, destination spot for us, uh, it's been very busy. So people have been coming down and, um, you know, we, I, we try to, we always wear the mask and everything when we're in our facility and things like that, obviously not on the court, but, uh, you know, I, I really have seen an uptick of people wanting to play tennis. I, I assumed it was just because they wanted to take lessons from me and they sure. just found out about <laughs> yeah, it. Right. Yeah. TJ uh, Milton at Alice Beach. I'm there. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> But no, we, uh, but we have seen that. I mean, I hate to even, you know, uh, prosper at the time of such despair, yeah. but, uh, but we, uh, you know, we're, we're servicing our, our people and, and I think people are, uh, enjoying what's going on in terms of if, if they have the ability to get to this location. Yeah. And I don't mean any disrespect to people who, I mean, cause it's a bad situation for it's, a lot of people. And yeah. I'm not trying to make light of it, but I'm glad that you're, you're doing well. And Florida is a kind of a, a right to work state. Texas yeah. uh, is uh, there. A lot of people are moving your way. A lot of people are moving our way. So oh. we're very fortunate that we're in a, in a good situation, you know, at, at the moment, it seems like now tell us where that, that people can find, find you. Uh, tell us a little bit about Alice Beach. Yeah, they Alice find you on the Beach internet and, and yeah. Zuma and folks at home. Yeah. Alice is spelled A L Y S. The Y is doing the vowel job there, huh? A L Y S. Alice is the matriarch of the, the Stevens family. Who, they own EBSCO. Uh, which is out of Birmingham. They're uh-huh. a large, large company, and we're one of our their real estate uh, ventures. So, uh, yeah, Alice Beach, uh, A-L-Y-S, and it's uh, right on 30A. Right now, I'm sure a lot of people are more familiar with Rosemary Beach, maybe, yeah. or Seacrest Beach, but it's all along that 30A uh, highway, and it's just uh, really fantastic. There's uh, St. Joe Company has Camp Creek Golf Course and Shark's Tooth Golf Course in this area, and the the amount of uh, recreation and excitement for the, you know, vacationing down here is as off the charts. So, uh, you know, coming down to 30A is, is a lot of fun. That's for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it. Sounds like it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in the car road trip. Right? Yeah, yeah, let's road trip. We yeah. got a Murphy bread. Yes. Uh, got a Murphy right? yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's right. go. <laughs> Murphy Jensen bed. Murphy Jensen. I need a bigger one for him. He's <laughs> big That's right. He's a large man. Right. He's solid three, four inches taller than us. Yeah. Right. But you, you've got uh, plenty of courts and things like that to do. Sounds like around the area, right? So the infrastructure is, is really starting to expand here, and, and then future probably uh, probably half you know half the facilities are built out. Now you're going to get another thousand, couple thousand people there. You guys are not going to be the yeah. uh, best kept secret in the world. Absolutely. And then in the whole area, you know, it's really developing. Uh, Rosemary Beach has always been a kind of tenant. I think they have eight clay courts, so they've always had some tournaments as well. And uh, the St. Joe Company is developing right near us uh, the uh, a new uh, resort style pool, a large boutique hotel and a oh. bunch of courts and stuff like that. So it's you, you have a lot of options in this area. So uh, I'd like to think that ours is the best, but, you know, yeah. still it's uh, it's a it's a beautiful location, that's for sure. Well, that yeah. sounds great, boy. Um, man, Florida. I, I, that's uh, this time this, of the year. Yeah. Seventy degrees versus thirty eight degrees. I know where I'm heading. When yeah. we when we started this fun podcast, um, uh, we did the occasional we call it chill and grill episodes yes. where we intentionally did not get a guest because some of our listeners or fans would say, you know, I love that first pilot episode where it was just us, yes, just talking, and then we'd have guests, and then about once a month we'd do the chill and grill and. And these questions, and, and even the third set one that we're about to do, yep. uh, CB's answer is always, it, w- when we go beach or mountains, it's always beach, and it's always retire in Florida. So That's you right. actually will see him in your Murphy bed one day. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's coming. Yeah, I love hot weather. I, I am not a fan of cold weather. That's not uh, – I, I lived in the mountains for three years, and that was – That's right, Utah. Uh, yes, that was – I mean, Utah's great. Weber oh, State right there. There we yeah. go. Gorgeous. But still uh, – it, it was just a little too chilly for, for this amigo. Yeah. Well, uh, should we roll into yeah. the third set? Sure, and in absolutely. the third set, we've got a Fred Vianco's question, question coming. Yes. So that'll um, that'll be in there at some point. Uh, the, the, we're going to foreshadow that by saying this is a guy, TJ Middleton, who has played tennis tournaments. As he joked, he's lost in 190-whatever countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to have something to do with that. So be ready for that one. <laughs> CV1, let's right. go so, to the, uh, Reflex Volleys. Quick answers. Yes, and yes. A lot of fun. This is our third set. And, yes, uh, third set, and there's three sets, three segments in the third set. That's yep. right. Three. All right. So now this is this is gonna be a uh, good question here. But I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about this here for a second when we ask uh, this. Go ahead. First band you saw in concert. I'm trying to think if 
you know, where were you were? Yeah, is this Marin or yes. Georgia or, or where? Or Houston, maybe. Maybe he's down yeah, in Houston. Could be. He went to uh, Gillies. Uh, oh, oh, the um, the Jefferson Airplane at the Greek Theater in Berkeley. Oh, Berkeley. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Jefferson yeah. Airplane. Wow. wow. I've That's seen a couple solid. concerts right there in B-Town. Yeah. Wow. Man. Jefferson Airplane. What, how old were you? My goodness. That's. Uh, I was. Oh, I'll tell you. I was. 12. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then, then the, uh, shortly after that, uh, I was living in Marin and, uh, the Rolling Stones were playing their farewell tour when I was 12. <laughs> and, uh, I told my still friend, life, 1980 uh, or 81. Yeah. A friend of mine, uh, was uh, taking a limo to candlestick uh-huh. to watch the, watch the stones. And I'm, I'm like, mom, I gotta go. This is it. This is the last time I'll ever, ever. get to the stones <laughs> ever. And, uh, she's like, hell no, you're not going. My dad was like, no, you're not going. I was like, you can't believe it. You're not going to let me go to see the stones. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it started that, you know, that was probably a good decision by them. Oh, uh, it's hilarious. All right. So if you could hear a band, if you could hear a band in concert, what, if you, is there one that you haven't heard? Maybe you'd like to hear. I'd like, you know, I haven't seen Elton John. I want to see Elton John. Oh, that's you know, interesting. I mean, he's, yeah. God, he's so good. Yeah. And, you know, I, the closest thing actually was that was what's the movie called? Super uh, Rocket Man. Rocket, Rocket Man. Man. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really good movie. And uh, anyway, I thought Elton Elton's so good. I, you know, I never got no chance to see him. He's a big tennis. Definitely, oh, yeah. So. He wrote Philadelphia Freedom with uh, uh, an ode to Billie Jean mm-hmm. King. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. That, World team tennis girl. <laughs> he's a massive tennis fan, and in my instructional stuff, I have a great picture of Elton John with a horrible backhand grip, hitting a one hander mm-hmm. like this. And I use him as you know, I love him, but let's not hit backhands like mm-hmm. this man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> not now with the forehand great. grip, right? Yeah, just let's change that right there. That's yeah. great. Uh, okay. I, well, just I'm thinking about this also. Too. How many bands did you see in Athens? You know, because I'm trying to think. Boy, you were right there for four years. I bet you went to a lot of concerts, didn't you? Did you guys go to quite a few uh, venues, or did Coach McGill say, uh-uh? Ah, Coach McGill. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. He didn't want to know what was going on. Right. He'd say, well, just two beers a piece, but let's not get sloppy drunk. <laughs> sloppy drunk. Uh, so uh, no, I have so many bands: Fetch and Bones, Let's Active. You know, all the all these bands that came through were just absolutely fantastic. I mean, and plus all the bands that we'd book at our fraternity houses, yeah. it was it was just I can't believe my I can still hear you know <laughs> some of those Circle Jerks we saw one time oh, coming wow. through. I mean, just uh, it was incredible. Forty Watt yeah. was an amazing club and. Uh, Uptown Lounge, obviously, it was really good. And now I haven't been back in a while, so I don't know what's what's there, what's not. But uh, you know what's um, what's still there is Wuck Street Records. Is, Wuck Street, no it's way. still yeah. there, and they have an Atlanta location, and it is mobbed with tourists, but also locals, fraternity kids, athletes. Everybody goes, nice. even though nobody buys CDs anymore, and that great or records yeah. anymore. Right. Uh, my, my buddy Trey Carter opened one in Carrollton, Georgia, called the Vinyl Frontier. Oh, he has a little, the uh, vi- little shop there. Great man, record, record guy. So uh, it's great. So did you all ever hear a band? Because you, I know you guys are Georgia guys. The producers, I love the producers. Yes. They were kind of a small time band, but they made it big for with a couple of hits. I didn't know if you ever had them back in the in the eighties. Did you ever see them? I did. Uh, the producers. I don't, think I saw them. I don't think I saw them, but I know them. Do you know yeah. who I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I checked them out and they they showed up on YouTube. I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's <laughs> unbelievable. The producers, I love those guys. They were they had like one well, album. I might have seen them and I might not remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because it was two beers, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Two beers. Yeah. Right. Two beers. Two beers. Two beers. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that one maybe three three beers. That's it. The producer. <laughs> favorite band. Who's your favorite band? My favorite band. Oh gosh, I don't know. We're uh, depends on the know. day. Depends on the day. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying to get my daughter to listen to Enter Sandman before she goes on the court. Metallica so as a walk on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I've been, uh, you know, I've been jamming a lot of ACDC lately. Have you old like school that. Aussie yeah. Uh, hard rock? Yeah. Yeah. I've been, you know, I play uh, music, always play music when I'm teaching. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I've asked the client what, what they want to do or whatever, but, uh, but I always have something going on in, uh, out on the court. So it's, it's really fun. How do you do it? Do you have them piped in or just in your cart? There's a speaker. I just do the speaker. Yeah. I got a JBL deal. A little uh-huh. JBL. 
And uh, then when I'm golfing, you got to have the speaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you do a playlist or several playlists? Like, okay, I have a 20-something woman. I'm going to do some R&B or I have a this or, or I have an older guy. I'm going to go older music. What do you think? You know, I do uh, mostly Pandora, uh, you know, whatever whatever artist or whatever Pandora um, playlist or whatever yeah. that is, from that, that genre or whatever. And so I don't, and I purposely don't pay for the, uh, for the you know, premium for, for the no commercials. Right. And so when it comes on, my favorite joke is like, yeah, we got some budget, budgetary constraints. You know? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. But you do trust the algorithm to on Pandora just to suggest the right stuff. Yeah. It seems to be yeah. pretty good. Yeah, and, uh, that's cool. Some guys want to, uh, you know, just some like, uh, you know, French jazz, something or another. And then I, I've been dealing, I've been like grooving to a little, uh, like down tempo stuff, bonobo. I love oh, bonobo. Yeah, like, just kind of like cool, like white noise in the background and stuff. My wife Courtney feels like it's like pins and needles, like shooting through her head. <laughs> she, she wants some country <laughs> out there, and you know, we, have, we have a lot of we have a lot of country stars down here. I'm which sure. Is really fun. Um, you know, Charles Kelly from Lady A is a friend of mine. We play golf together and stuff like that. And Little Big Town, they live on my street, and and also in Alice as yeah. well. So. uh it's really cool. And Luke Bryan's down here, and uh, Sean Payton is a uh, is at Alice Beach too. So from the Saints, so that's kind of that's kind of fun. And we've been friends with them, but but it's a it's a cool spot, you know. There's some there's some interesting people, and and all the stars are you know they they're real mellow, you know. So it's just kind of you know nobody messes with them. You know, they just kind of come down here to do their thing. So I appreciate that, and so we just uh, just uh, it's good vibe. Good stuff, yeah. man. Fred, uh, Fred, Fred, Fred Fred's, try, Fred's trying to tell us that 80 and 81 was the Steel Wheels tour. <laughs> I happen to know that was 989, and Still Life and Tattoo You was more our middle school years. So, I, I, Fred, sorry, baby. Love you. Oh. Uh, and, and you've got so much rock cred, but I'm going to pull a little bit of rank little bit of rank on you, even though he plays a 12-string, yes. and I only uh, maybe dream of that. So I sorry. saw Fred. I saw Fred's picture that you, you know with his guitars in the background. It's like I don't. I don't have like a good. You know, I got. You got some art back there. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So now here's the question. Now, so we. I like to ask everybody. I'm. I'm thinking about this one. I knew what Fred was going to be. Hmm. We knew Mark Gonzalez where he was going to be. And I'm trying to think here about TJ. Okay. So if you're in a band, have you ever been in a band? Have you ever done any band work or anything? Are you a musician? Have any? Uh, I play the guitar and I've one original song. I've one original and that, and I just leave them wanting more. That's all I got. <laughs> That's it. Smoke, leave them wanting more. <laughs> smoke on the water. Do you play on that? No, just my yeah. one original. That's it. And I and they asked me to play something else. Like that's all I got. That's it. You drop the uh, mic and just leave. Drop right? the just, mic. Just go. That's, that's it. Great, <laughs> uh, TJ. Uh, is it a downbeat country song or what is it? It's kind of a. It's kind of a middle of the road. Every rose has its thorn uh-huh. type song. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not every day that you get a poison reference on a podcast like this. <laughs> so thank you. Exactly. All right. Love it. All right. If you're in, if you're in this fictitious band, mythical band, are you the lead singer, lead guitarist, drummer, keyboards, or bass guitarist? What are you playing? Singer. 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 Front, front man. He's a front man. Who's your favorite front man? Do you like a Mick? Front man. Uh, gosh, that's. Let's see. I don't know. Uh, let me think. I think uh, I was trying to think of. Uh, There's a lot of good frontmen. There's a lot of great frontmen out there. You start thinking, you know, David Lee, uh, Freddie, you know, Mercury, Bono, Bono, Bono. 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 Yeah. Bono. yeah. I mean, I was thinking Axel, but you know, he's. I don't know. He's, <laughs> they, that guy from the Cult, though. He's. Oh, solid. Ian Asprey yes. is yeah. amazing. Uh, yes. Uh, he's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You gotta have a little dance swagger. Bono doesn't have maybe the dance swagger. You got the he's got the voice. Ian That's certainly the, does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And yeah. actually, yeah. you look like Billy, the uh, guitar, the lead guitar guy in the Cult. Mm-hmm. Do I? Did anybody yeah. tell you that ever? You guys look a lot alike. No, Same. I, I get the, I get the Greg Norman reference a lot. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's the, the golf. Shark. That's the athlete golf blonde guy thing. But in rock and roll, I'm going Billy Duffy. You swing the club, then I watch him swing the club. It's. Mm. Not, not anymore. No. Not, not sharking anybody. No. <laughs> so the lead singer, I like that. Yeah. So, so are you like seventies lead singer in leather pants? Or are you more of a you know, like a Steven Tyler and Mick? You know, wearing the leather pant. Uh, 
I like to feel more of an Eddie Vedder vibe. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jeans. Like yeah. Yeah. Jeans. Yeah. A little scruffy every now and then, but you can dress it up or down. You yeah. know, whatever you want. Okay. I didn't know if you, or maybe Elton. You know, Elton liked to dress up a little bit. You know, with his. Uh, uh, that's another level, <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah. Might be. You know, my my brother's gay, so maybe I'm half gay. There know? we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Love so it. Second set here. Okay. Right. okay. First paid gig. What what what'd you do? Did, was what did little TJ do as your first paid job? My first paid job. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know if I had a job. Did really? I have a job? I got a job in high school, I think, because I wanted a stereo. Uh-huh. Right? I had a, yeah. Like a deli or something. And uh, so I wanted a stereo. I thought it'd be good. And my parents, yeah, you could buy a stereo and pay it off or something, whatever. And my coach was like, well, that's good. You'll slice your hand off in the deli slicer and not be able to play tennis. <laughs> oh, no. Do that. But, uh, but to that to that to that end, uh, my dad he's like his favorite joke is it only cost him five hundred thousand to get me a fifty thousand dollars dollar. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, that math actually holds up today. We've seen some of the oh, studies. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it really holds it's up. Crazy. It's yeah, crazy. He paid for that scholarship way What's over. That? I said he paid for that scholarship like 20 times, right? Oh, yeah. And he said, uh, so I'm playing the tour as well. And he and I, I did well at a tournament. I sent him $5,000. And he just calls me. He's like, hey, son, thanks so much for sending me that money. I really appreciate that or whatever. And then next day he gets a bill on his Amex for $6,500. <laughs> <laughs> 1500 on the tray. Yeah. He didn't realize what was coming, right? Big yeah. business, folks. Big business. Yeah. What do you like to watch? Movies, TVs? And if so, what do you like to watch? You know, uh, the fam and I are rocking the uh, Lifetime original Christmas movies lately. <laughs> oh, oh um, my goodness. Which one? The sappy, the sappy, crappy, yeah. Yeah. acting, whatever it is. I mean, oh, it's fantastic. And, you know, some of them are just awful. But it's just fun to kind of get us in the spirit or whatever. And uh, we've been enjoying that. But I'll tell you what we do is uh, we watch The Wheel. We watch The Wheel every night. <laughs> the, wheel. the Wheel. Um, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, and, uh, my daughter loves the game show, so it's it's really fun. Oh, that's but, cool. Uh, like Jeopardy, she she into Jeopardy. Like, uh, Jeopardy's a little. I don't. I don't think she's got a uh, quite the. I, well, I don't either. The intellect for that, but uh, I can usually go the hundred. The hundred dollars, I can I can go with. When it gets down to about eight hundred to a thousand, I'm like, man, I'm out. I I don't know what they're talking about. Never heard that stuff. So so we watch we watch yeah. America Says with. Uh, America. America. Oh, there she is. Hey. In my ear. Say hi. Yeah, say right there. There we go. Oh, hey. What's up, Lila? How are you? Hey. Nice to meet you finally. Yeah. This is Craig Bell, Craig and my name's AJ Chabria. Glad to have you. Pleasure to see you, kid. What, what do you like to watch? What does she like to watch besides, uh, hey. what's that? Game shows and Netflix mostly. Look at, look at. Netflix? Okay, which, which Netflix. Netflix? What do you watch on Netflix? Uh, a lot of shows. I, I just finished Sister, Sister. It's a show. Okay. Is yeah. that the one from um, from many years ago, a couple decades ago, or is that new? No, uh, it's it's probably from nineteen ni- it's nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. <laughs> Nineteen ninety eight. Wow, that was a while ago. That wow. was a while ago. That's the one. He knew it. He knew it. He knew right. it. That's the one. I, I, he I, knows I, everything. That's typically kidding? not my demo, but I like it. Right. Sister, <laughs> sister, you're funny, watching yeah. sister, sister from yeah. It was like yeah. twins, um, Tamara something. I I I don't know how I remember some of this stuff, but Tamara and Tia. That's it. That's them. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> T- Good family values. I love it. AJC, that's awesome. Yeah, he pulls st- he's pulls stuff out like that all the time. I I don't know where he he's not, he doesn't even have a computer here. I mean, it's, it's amazing what he what he pulls out. All right, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. What what do you all like? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner at at the Middleton household? Not breakfast. What's that? Not breakfast. No? no, I've been eating steak though for breakfast. Early steak. You are like Harry Hopman era Australian tennis steak and eggs early, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. We go, we go, we beef her up. You know? We got to get the steak going. <laughs> heavy you know? fitness, too. I mean, that goes with the heavy fitness. Are these Omaha steaks, or is this like dad's, you know, going out, you know, killing yeah. the cow? We, we, can't, we can't go too big too early, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Budget, baby. Budget. She's only 11. Budget. <laughs> But well, speaking of food, okay, yeah. now this is a good question. This that is a good a question one. for both of the Middletons here. All right, uh, we know AJ and all four of us would be invited to this special dinner party, kind of a soiree. Who are four other people up to maybe as many as you want to? Who else would we invite to this dinner party? 
These can be tennis. Anybody. These can be uh, music. These yeah. can be art mm-hmm. or inter-era politics, yeah. history. Right. Have fun with it. Dinner for four, yes. uh, including all of us and family and Lila. Four more or four? Oh. Four, four, more. Four, more. four more. Four more. Four more. At least four. At least four. You got to have a minimum of four. Who do you want? Who would you invite? I would say Andy Warhol. That's wow. a good one. I like it. Yeah. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Yeah. And Medea. And Medea. Oh, that's two. Okay. <laughs> Guy's uh, hilarious. Yeah. Medea. Medea. We Medea. love Medea. Okay. We think Medea's. Uh, Medea. It's, it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> um, let's see. Who else? Who else would we do? I think I think the Donald it would be absolutely the interesting. Donald. Donald Trump, the Trumpster. Wow. Okay. Andy Warhol and Don Trump and Tyler Perry. Wow. That okay. guy's hilarious. Get a little yeah. dichotomy of what's going on there. Yeah. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> who else? Uh, let's see. Who else? We've got to think of somebody that's. Uh, what do you think? A tennis player. A tennis player. Yeah. I think Fed. Got to go with Fed. Love Fed. What about girl tennis. A girl tennis player. Who? Uh, yeah, who do you like? Serena, Osaka, yeah. who do you like? Ash Barty, maybe? I like Ash Barty. Um, Roger coached her. Um, I don't really know her, so I don't know. I don't know, but I, I do my hair exactly like Bianca. My dad does it every morning. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, dad does. Wow. Bianca and Rescue. Put yes. it on top. Move. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, there it is. I think Sharapova would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. yeah. That'd be that'd be fun. What about Rafa? What about Rafa? Would Rafa, Rafa? be Rafa? Yeah. yeah. Who was doing the Rafa impersonation? Somebody was doing that. I There's no impersonation here. here. This is Rafa, right? Come on. Well, the, well TJ, no, I uh, cannot uh, I cannot hang with uh, the return of serve of <laughs> TJ, no. I'm going to have a tough time with my lefty serve into his backhand, no. Uh, Lila, maybe we can play one day, no? <laughs> we, we're gonna work hard. We're gonna play against your mom and your dad. No, it's gonna be fun. No, we're gonna slide around on the red clay. It's gonna be great, Lila. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Fantastic. So maybe Rafa might get into the uh, the soiree, right? <laughs> Are we, are oh, yeah, we, are we yeah. Sure? Let's let's invite the Rafa. Yeah. No, it's right. going to be good. Somebody's, somebody's got to pick up the tab. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Exactly. All right. East Coast, West Coast. What do you guys like? East Coast, West Coast. What you think? Uh, East Coast, West Coast. Uh, I you know. live both. You live in both yeah, coasts. You can you can really answer yeah. this. Uh, I think West Coast has the weather. You know, I mean that's just so much better. I mean. But, you know, up north, it may be a little cooler. But uh, uh, East Coast, it's just a different different vibe, you know, sure. and a different mentality for all the people. It's, it's been uh, wherever you live, you know, you got to jive with what's going on. You got to have a. Whoop. Oh, she left. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> we'll be right back. OK, that's right. Uh, but uh, no, uh, <clears throat> you know, what? it's a. Uh, She's back. Okay. The, the uh, I think the mentality, you know, I mean, what what kind of vibe you're looking for? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, East Coast up north, a little little quicker, a little you know faster, yeah. you know, twitch or whatever. So uh, I think you know, like like teaching tennis, you can, you can go with anything. Yeah, <laughs> you're such a chameleon. That's great, TJ. Mountains <laughs> or beach? Mountains or beach? Are you beach guy, mountain guy? What about Layla? Layla. Um. I like the mountains a lot. I like yeah. snow because I don't really see it much here. Town of Florida, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a struggle for it because we live a block from the beach. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Life's tough. Tough. Uh, I like I like I the beach. Like I like the, the weather. I, I love to like ski, though. I love to ski. Oh, you the do, thing, yeah. I, I love those North Carolina mountains and going to mountains and different stuff, but getting there is like a little bit rough. Yeah. So, uh, but, but no, I love the beach. I like the warm weather. Sunrise or sunset? Are you all uh, early morning people or more of the late night crowd? Sunset, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely Evening. sunset. Yeah, yeah. That sunrise is a little rough. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah I'm with you. That yeah, I'm, I'm a night owl. I'll be up till midnight, one in the morning. Sometimes I exercise at eleven thirty, twelve o'clock even. Yeah, I'll be up at, at, at PM. Night? Yes. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh yeah. That's a, well, you must sleep better though than that. After yeah, that, I can always sleep when I after I work out. I know some people say it wakes them up, but to me, it, it makes me tired, so I can go right to sleep. So, mm. all right. Uh, favorite season. This is a good one. Summer. Fall, winter, spring. What do you all like? It's always summer in Florida. Yeah, they have one <laughs> one deal. Lila, what about you, kid? Yeah, I like um, probably winter because it's not like so cold because it's not it's Florida, so it's 
going to be per it's sometimes it's perfect weather during the winter sometimes but yeah. like but like today it's it? it it actually really cold it does like, yeah 70 it's freezing it's so, yeah. you need a, <laughs> Ooh, we need a jacket 39 though <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> what's your all's favorite holiday Christmas. Christmas. Christmas sure. coming up. Coming up in right. two, three weeks, yeah. Do, do you all do the lights? Or is there a big light display at the Middleton House? On or? the palm trees? Yes. We got some. Uh, we got our Christmas tree going shade. on. We got the elves are flying around. They're in a different yeah, my, spot every day. My elves are over there. The elves yeah. are over here. They're they're having a party every night. I don't know what's going <laughs> on with them. But, uh, but no, we, we, we do like the Christmas. We have a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. What's your, uh, what do you all like to do in your spare time when you have some spare spare time? What do you all do? Um, I like um, coloring. I like I like go I like golfing. Like some, sometimes going to the range with my dad and doing like putt putt or uh, go, or hitting range balls and doing puzzles. <laughs> uh, puzzles, awesome, awesome. I'm Old... working on a 500 piece puzzle right now. Nice. Wow. My wife is working on a thousand piece, and it's been a week. You know, so she may have to come down to your your level with the 500s. But that, that's a great pursuit. It's puzzles. spread all over the place, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. Now, this is the third part of our – it's more back – we're going back to tennis. This is going to be kind of some fun stuff also. Should too. we roll with Fred's question here? Uh, yes. We're, I was just going to get to the second. Oh, let's, oh, second let's, let's go. Let's right, go yeah. first, so first question. All right. Indoor tennis or outdoor tennis? Do you like indoor tennis or outdoor tennis? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I think uh, – I like uh, I like outdoor tennis. I like outdoor. I like being in the elements. I mean, I like the indoor. It's a little it's a little quick. Sometimes it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, a stale with the lights and stuff like that. Sometimes, so I think outdoor with the fresh air. Lila, you yeah. too, outdoor. Yeah. Outdoor. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's our favorite surface? What's our surface of choice? Grass. Fast. Grass. 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 Oh, sorry, yes. oh, I love it. Yeah. Like Dad did so well ah, at Wimbledon. Yes. We I, I went one time with my dad. Love you got that. to that go. I, I went to the um, this daycare called the Crush, and I uh, I played with Roger Fetters, two uh, twin girls. Uh huh. Did you really? Wow. Could yeah, you tell them apart, Charlene, Charlene and uh, Myla Rose? Could you Could you tell which was which? Uh, a little. Yeah. While I can't remember now because it, I mean it was a uh, but I can't remember what the different was, but difference was, but now. Back then, I did remember. And I they were there. they were younger than you, right? Uh, I think they were up maybe like a couple months or a year. Okay, younger. were they pretty good? Did they hit the ball? Oh, I didn't. Play, I played oh. with them at the daycare. Oh, I thought you might have played tennis. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did play on the practice courts. Well, so I went in, went in to get her at the practice courts. Right, I was like, come on, we're going to go hit at a yeah, rangy, yeah, a rangy yeah. uh, across the way. Yeah. Play at the courts or whatever because they have the crash there, and it's just. I mean, you go in there and there's like. There's like six Mrs. Doubtfires. Says, hello, darling. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and Lila, Lila's in this like princess costume. They've been feeding her all day and the whole deal and just like so fantastic. And I'm like, honey, we're going to go play at Wimbledon on the Wimbledon courts. And she's like, starts crying. She's like, I don't want to play. I'm going to hang out here. It's like, oh, but hey, I didn't uh, get out, though. No, I but didn't we get did. out, and I had fun. We got out I on the court, too. Oh, it was a good time. So now, now we're going to get to Fred Viancos' question here. This is, this is the big one. Favorite tournament. Favorite tournament. Out of all 190-something yes. countries. Yes. Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I played I played fifteen Wimbledons and I've been on I played on center court four times and I don't know, for some reason it always vibed with me and that just being there and just I, like uh, I mean it's like it, you know, the uh the ambiance and the sort of like, you know, if you guys have been in the masters or not, but the you know, it's just everything's in perfect order, everything's in perfect place. It's just the most incredible venue and the most incredible experience you could ever you could ever do they start on time too don't they like when they say you know 1 p.m it's it's like yeah. 1 p.m they wait and they go then one o'clock that's it we play <laughs> that's it no no they really are and it's uh you know there's some there's this different it's a different vibe you know i don't maybe because i'm fortunate enough to play on courts and do def, you know do decently there mm -hmm. and uh but they you know they call me from my from the 
you know, the peons locker room and say, your presence is requested at the center court locker room. You know, the first time <laughs> you walk in there and you see that, like, uh, I think it's Kipling. It's like meet with triumph and disaster. And, and treat, treat those, those two imposters just the same. Yeah. So you walk under that thing and you kind of wait in like the green room or whatever it is. And then you just, they're like, okay. And you walk out like, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, center court opens up. I mean, yeah, there's nothing that takes that place. Dude, were, awesome. were, you, were you there when you had to bow? You know, to the to the royal yeah, royal box. I did. Yeah, the Duchess of Kent <sighs> gave us our trophy, and you know we had to walk in and yeah. have the bow. And Lori Lori McNeil was with me at that time, yeah. and it was. Uh, she's like, okay, and she she had played there a few yeah. times. She's like, okay, walk, walk, walk. She's like, stop. Oh, no, no, no. I was like, okay, got it. I think that's a great tradition. I, I hate it. Yeah, we miss, we miss I, I, that. Not that you're, you know, we, we're not giving it any honor. Yeah. I mean, we are, but you're not. But still, I think that's one of those traditions that I wish they would bring back. Cause I just we think that, we yeah. miss that, and yeah, we also we miss, miss this. this. <laughs> Love it. This gets you fired up, you know. You know I just want to see Dick Enberg come on with Bud Collins. Oh, you know? my. Oh, my. Song man, uh, yeah. uh, uh, I saw Mr. Enberg walking on the street. Uh-huh. Uh, I was standing near my flat there in uh, Wimbledon Village, and uh, just w- ran up to him and uh, you know said hello. I said you don't know me or whatever. He's like, I absolutely know you. You made the finals of Wimbledon. I mean, boom, he knew it right away. Really, unbelievable. Guy knew everything. That is made. a broadcaster and a tennis fan and a mensch, an amazing man. Th- those two guys, Enberg and Bud Collins, then then whoever else they, they had with them. Yeah. I mean, but Dick Enberg was great, and Bud Collins was just awesome as well. I just uh, I tell you, Bud was great, and yeah. Fowler actually is doing a fantastic yeah, job. I he does think. a pretty Chris good job, Fowler, too. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Do you like to watch tennis on TV? I do. Do you? Okay. Do you like to watch Tennis Channel? Uh, yeah. I, I watch, uh, especially I watch when the – uh, Grand Slams around. Awesome. What about and, you, TJ? Yeah. Do you like to watch tennis? I love it. Do I you love really? It. Okay. Yeah, it just, uh, it's a really, uh, you know, it helps you to kind of reassure what you already think you know. Or don't know. And the women's game now is really exciting. I mean, it, you know, the men's game sometimes can be a little bit overpowering and some quicker points and things like that, I guess. But, uh, you know, with the amount of Americans coming through in the women's game, it's kind of, I think it's pretty darn exciting of what's going on with, uh, well, both tours, really. TJ, on the men's side, I know you love Federer. Uh, tell us some of the most intriguing ones. You mentioned Bianca Andreescu, um, which is Lila's uh, hair twin there. But tell us some of the elements that you love in women's tennis and maybe some of the players who are doing it. Uh, well, I think Kenan is one of the girls that uh, I like her tenacity, her fight, you know, the dad in the in the stands is a little bit of a riot, you know, so he's a little bit intense. So I think that's kind of adds a little drama to it all. Um, it's uh, we I've always been a big fan of uh, killer. And so I like Halep. I like to follow Halep. And uh, that's really that's really fun. Um, I think uh, Medvedev on the men's side is one of the guys that just it amazes me that a guy that big can move like, you know, kind of a Miloslav Mucir yeah. kind of guy back in the day. And just, he's like, so dang, he's the, he's, he would be my worst nightmare to play. Uh, you know, just kind of trying to get it by him. He would be, he'd be awful, but, uh, but it's been, uh, it's been good. I mean, now they got the emergence of, uh, you know, team winning the U S open. I thought that was great for him. Obviously, um, I hope Federer comes back and, you know, has a strong presence here at the Aussie. Is he in the Aussie? I, I, I didn't see if he's going to play. I, I read that. I mean, I've seen videos of him practicing, and it sounds like he's planning on, on it. And I believe it might actually help him a little bit that the Australian Open is starting on February 8th, three weeks later. So it gives your Serena's and Federer and – Bianca and Ash Barty and Nick Kyrgios, people who have not been playing, it's maybe a slight edge to them, maybe. Yeah, and it's and it's uh, while he's controversial, Kyrgios is he's pretty fun to watch. You know, I mean, he you never know what's going to happen. I mean, some people would traditionalists might not like him that much, but uh, you know, he brings attention to the game, which is is good. Kind of a Dennis Rodman, I guess, type type of guy or something like that. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting. Nick, would you have liked to play TJ in your day? Mate, I mean, uh, uh, TJ would have not a chance. You call yourself a journalist, mate. <laughs> Piss off. Next question, TJ. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. 
that's hilarious. That's had, great. That's had, great. Had a, had a re- couple of really good questions here. I'm going to divert off to, uh, from my notes here real quick. Uh, Rick wants to know your favorite current player to watch. Who's your favorite current player to watch right now? Uh, I would say, um, I don't know. Women's or men's? Women's or men's. Yeah, he didn't say. He just said favorite current player. Just say one of each. Yeah, either way. Either way. Uh, uh, Who's yours? Probably women's. uh, Let's say. I don't don't really know. Maybe. I like watching. You know who I like watching is that (laughs) she, Sue. What's her name? Sue Wei Shea, Chinese lady. Yes. Yes, She's amazing. (laughs) She's crafty. The girl that hits the drop shot every time, the Asian girl. She's, she's great. Oh, and and yeah. also Svitolina, Svitolina is one of the girls yeah. I love watching her play. Yeah. She's fantastic. And uh, I would say uh, my boy John Isner. Oh, yes, him. Georgia boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Georgia boy. John is uh, he's one of my – he's a good dude, Georgia Bulldog, and uh, I just hope he keeps it rocking. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a great dude. He lives here. We've seen him, uh, seen him around, around here a lot, yep. yeah. Yeah, that's right. His, his yeah. wife is from Dallas, that's right? That's right, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. All right, so the second question is, uh, how do you see the exposure of doubles today? What what uh, can be done better to promote doubles? Since uh, I wouldn't say you're a double specialist, but you you had really a successful career in doubles. What what do we need to do to, to get the doubles game, maybe mixed doubles game, a little bit more exposure, a little bit more uh, quality airtime? Well, I think it's uh, it's improved a lot. The quality of the uh, exposure, you know, they're getting more matches at prime time. I think. I think promoting the guys and understand the personalities. It seems like the uh, the name is escaping me right now, but the the new promote the new promotion of the ATB Tour. Uh, oh, Andrea Gaudenzi. But yeah, the but new there's president. A catch, there's a catchphrase for the new. Uh, oh, this the, is tennis, maybe? This is, this is tennis. This yeah. is, yeah. That, that type of marketing, when you can capture sort of the personalities and sort of get the uh, – that's really what they miss. You know, they cap- you got to capture the personality and have that kind of personal tie with somebody that you're yeah. – like you do with, a you know, a top singles guy or whatever. So – and I think that can be exciting and really, uh, you know, think programs like this that people can get out there and, uh, you know, get to know somebody a little bit more and have them loosen up a little bit. And yeah. Really, uh, you know, say, hi. I want to cheer for that guy. I want to go watch that guy. So I think that's good. And, um, the, uh, the promotion of like the, the tour, you know, they're, they're trying to get more money obviously for the lower ranked players to be able to, a lot of people to be able to play and stuff. I think that'll bleed into knowing more players, obviously, because, you know, like on the golf tour, I know a lot more players that, I mean, than the average person, you know, yeah. like I know a lot yeah. of tennis players, obviously, but, but, you know, more people know golfers and because of the uh, promotion of like the whole thing. So I, mean, I think that's important. Do you think there could be room for, I've, I've had this thought about doubles and a mixed doubles tour separate of the singles and maybe meet at certain times, like in Indian Wells, Miami, the slams could, could there be room for a tour by itself? Cause yeah, you know, I think what you said, you know, the marketing of, of doubles, mixed doubles sometimes gets thrown off to seven, eight o'clock at night, not necessarily on center court. They're doing better. It's, it's definitely a lot better. I like watching doubles, and I know a lot of my, my members play doubles, and I think they'd like to watch it a little bit more. Is, is there room for something like that, do you think? Or I'm smoking something, you know, from Austin. <laughs> I think uh, maybe not necessarily a tour, but I think events like uh, maybe like the Labor Cup, or I'm not saying the Labor Cup yeah. format, but something that like a world team tennis type format where you'd maybe just have doubles or mm. mixed doubles, things like that, where you'd have a one-off and maybe do it however many times a year. And you could really, I think, promote that and really have the, uh, you know, the doubles guys get together where you'd have like, a, you know, a central location and you have people come and be able to do uh, clinics, pro-ams, that kind of thing in conjunction with watching these guys play and really have a sort of a more social environment where you could get to know these top level doubles guys. And they would kind of, you know, permeate throughout their, you know, kind of tour level, ex- tour level uh, tournaments throughout mm. the year. Yeah, because it's fun to watch the Bryan brothers. I mean, I was we were down when the Masters Cup was down Blast. in Houston. Man, they had some really great tennis down there. And uh, you see the top eight people, and it was great in Houston. This was about 20 years ago, and yeah. I, I really like watching it. Or even going when we had Davis Cup over at in Fort Worth. Uh, that was about 30 years ago when uh, Mac and uh, Sampras played. Uh, Dubs, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I was there in the Cow Palace waving my – I had a cowbell. You know, I was uh, – we need more cowbell. Okay, <laughs> I, I got it. Cowbell. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, down at the drum down in Austin when uh, – 
Spain. In yeah, US. we were playing yeah. Spain. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know doubles is great. I think that there's uh, some underrepresentation. But do you think? Do you think? That, I mean, you're an ATP alum. Do you do you hear people talking about it? Does anybody say anything in those meetings or brochures, publications? What do you all hear about? Well, to your point about uh, you know most of the people, uh, your members and such, they play doubles. Right. You know? everybody plays doubles so sure. it's just a really it's a natural uh, a natural thing to be able to um, associate with that game you know you watch a singles match it's like that's a big court to cover yeah. for a lot of people <laughs> sure so, uh, but uh, but yeah finding a way to uh, kind of uh, you know I feel like you know them getting closer personal touch with some of these guys would be just a huge thing so doing like sort of an event where you could uh, a couple of times a year, whatever it is, and uh, people would come from all over and really be able to interact with these guys would really kind of go a long way. And maybe coaching these guys up a little bit, you know, really understanding how to, uh, you know, communicate with these people media wise, personality wise, you know, understanding, Hey, who really does pay your salary? Yeah. You know I mean, where's it coming from? Yeah. Let's go. I mean, a lot of, uh, I think golf does that well because it's much easier to uh, play the course for a Tiger Woods playing with me, let's say as a sponsor or something like that. He can still look at the course and enjoy like a round of golf and be preparing for his tournament rather than hitting on a tennis court with, you know, some, you know, amateur player. Yeah. Yeah. A little different, but all right. Three more questions. Three more. Last three. We're turning, turning around and heading for the stretch right there. Uh, what sport would you have played if it wasn't tennis? Is there a sport you would like to have played maybe that you that you uh, dropped for tennis? Uh, <clears throat> golf for sure. Oh, really? Dad. So my, my dad, you know, he's a golfer, a big, you know, football player, but a golfer as well in the golf industry. And when I was probably eight or so, he took me in the sand trap and he said, you know, hit, you know, hit, you know, two inches behind the ball, take a full swing, and this is how you hit a bunker shot. And I knocked it in the hole. Wow. And he, said, yeah, and he said, he said, son, you should be a golfer. I was like, yeah, golf boring. Golf boring. Uh, golf boring. Uh, so now, uh, now instead of being a banged up old tennis player with four, you know, scopes on my knees, I could be out there playing the tour with Phil Mickelson. On the tour. That's great. So yeah. funny, tennis and golf, yeah. and golf being the other one, uh, but he has excelled as a teammate, winning yeah. the national NCAAs in, at Georgia, winning so many doubles titles in uh, mixed and men's uh, dubs. So you, you're a team guy here, even though your answers are individual sports. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, and then, and funny enough, you said that and we, you know, we won the world team tennis. Championship. That's the other one. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then I played, um, what's the Oberliga, yeah. uh, German Germany yep. as well. So uh, that team format is really, is really fun, but it's, uh, but yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's interesting that way. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's I, I like I like it being up to me, but then uh, it ended up being sort of a team format too. Love it. Would you Would you think that uh, the Bundesliga or the, the the league that you're o- talking Oba about, league, yeah. Oba league, would that Would that do well in in the states? Because I've I've heard about that over in Europe, especially in Germany. Would that format kind of work, club against club? And I've, I've heard some big money over there. I you know it was fantastic. I mean, I really uh, had a great experience doing it, and you know to supplement your income. Plus, you know, you're not if you're to get more matches in for your confidence uh-huh. for the tour. I mean, it's, fa- it's unbelievable. Best, so, you know, yeah. I play world team tennis and I'd play Oberliga, which is third league. Yeah. And uh, you'd only have one foreigner. So I played number one. And, uh, and so I'd play a match every Sunday and I'd play six weeks. I'd make like, you know, 15, 12 to $15,000 extra. Guaranteed. And go play. I could go play tournaments during the week in Europe. I had an apartment in uh, Castle, which is a, just north of Frankfurt, mm-hmm. at a car. And I could drive around Europe. And, and I did that for three years in a row and also played world team tennis. So it was a great supplement to your income. So, I mean, yeah, to your, to your point, I mean, it would, it would be fantastic for different clubs to be able to recruit and, do things like that and i think it was a, that would create more of a social environment as well so uh yeah i've heard i've heard that league is a lot of fun i've had a lot of friends who've yeah. gone over and played a Cu- couple employees and lots of friends of ours who, N- nobody's ever invited me i, I maybe <laughs> you're, you know. you're a pretty good player yeah. if they had a 60s division i think <laughs> no. you're my number one choice you know, back even back in the day you know i was thinking you know even back i had an assistant actually he went over and played some bonus league for right. germany yeah. one time and he got a he got what you're talking about for like one or two matches i was like hey you know if anybody needs anybody you know like you know <laughs> i'll come play too you know he got treated like royalty i was like wow that, that was, was really great. nice this league it was like becker and all these yeah. I mean, yes. all the top guys i mean it was it's inc- 
incredible. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really fun deal. And then you, they all come together for a, mm-hmm. afterwards for a, a team meal uh-huh. and you have a, you know, you know, beer or whatever, vice beer and yeah. all that. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, you know, the total German experience. Two, cool. two beers like coach, coach yeah. McGill says only two, two years. Right? Yeah. Two <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, so, uh, so doing that. So I go into this, I go, into this, pub, I go into this pub, I go into this pub and I, I say, yeah, let me give two beers made because he goes, <laughs> He's like, this is two. This is up yours. This is a, <laughs> this, you don't want to use this one. Oh, that's that's the middle finger over in Europe, huh? Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Many years. There we go. There we go. There's. There we go. There, there we go. go. That's kind of like this UT, right? You know, like yeah. okay, hook them horns. Yeah, and, and of course they use this for three. You're right. Yeah, that's yeah. the three. It, it would yeah. be like yeah. this would be like us using yeah, right. this. For, I just like one beer, please. Just right. one. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I learned yeah. that. For, I learned that. Coach for, McGill says one right now. Yeah. I learned that from Inglorious <laughs> Bastards. You know. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was the like, oh, German that's three. the German three. That was what gave him away. All right. Last two questions. Here okay. we go. All right. If you wouldn't have been involved in sports, what would you be doing right now? What would TJ Middleton be doing if you weren't involved in sports in somehow, some way? What do you think? In sports, some way. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, I never thought of it earlier, but I, I really like the development of stuff. You know, I mean, I really I've renovated a couple houses and, you know, real estate. And it's almost like immediate gratification is really cool. You know, seeing things uh, build and come out of the ground or whatever. And, you know, we did, we renovated a house down here and it's just, I don't know, stuff like that is just really, uh, it kind of gets me going, you know, to create something beautiful for your what? <laughs> you, <laughs> so something, you know, creating some, creating something like that, you know, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's exciting and you're kind of, get you know leaving your mark on the on the world so to speak i mean you're you're building something beautiful and for other people to enjoy or to uh you know kind of use that as a sounding board for your career or something maybe you could be like chip and joanne you know from uh, waco <laughs> the gains you know, the yeah, gains yeah. fam <laughs> the middletons i feel like lila had an answer for that yes, one lila yeah. what do you think yeah. do you have an answer for that question what would your dad be doing I like, I like um like marketing and like packaging stuff like uh-huh. yeah packaging. I, oh, she Every time packages. I go to the store, right. I tell my dad, "Look at the package." <laughs> Anything that has multiple things in, like a you know, a, a package, like there's a doll, there's a this, there's a that. I gotta have it. I got. I love those. It's <laughs> cool. Out. Like, like stuff from like Ulta and all that. Like, I, I'm like, it's a package. <laughs> Pizza Hut has a good package. I was at Pizza Hut the other night. They have a, they have a new box. It's like a three layer box. So you need to check really? out Pizza Hut. Yeah, this, that's no promo or anything for them. But I was just like, oh, I, I went and got pizza at another I, place. Man, and, uh, I was hoping you'd spring it on me that the third set is sponsored by Pizza, pizza Hut. Hut. Well, almost. Right? We just we get a pizza. patch deal right, right here. Right, right. right. We're, we're thinking about it. We're getting close to it. <laughs> One day. All right. Last Absolutely. question. Here it is. Here's the the creme de la creme. The 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 last Uh-oh. the big one right here. All right. So T J Milton, you're the commissioner of the great game. And if you could wave the magic wand, is there a change or changes that you would make to our, our sport or do you like it the way it is? Um, I think some of the uniformity would be good in the grand slams. You know, I heard Johan talking about, I think with y'all about doing the tiebreakers in the fifth set. I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, those types of things I think are good. I, there's a little bit of uh <clears throat> there's there's so many irons in the fire it seems like uh, they're, everybody's fighting kind of for the for their opinion or their choice mm. you know i just feel like that you know getting together more of a kind of a governing board body that would be much more comprehensive i don't know if that's uh you know orwellian to orwellian <laughs> or something but uh, but uh but i mean i like uh, I like the, the way it's going. I think that they're marketing the players better. I think that's a really big thing, uh, getting to know the personalities and things like that. I, I think there's, uh, you know, there's some, there's some really great discussion and some really um, exciting stuff about getting more money to the lower level players. So people can, those players can survive, you know, even, even though, uh, you know, these upper, upper level players are making so much money that, uh, they can, it can trickle down effect, I guess. I think that's a pretty good thing. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of good people out there. I think there's, uh, there's an ability to, um, make this game great. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, player, we're losing a lot of players, I think, to other sports for different reasons, but, uh, I think we can try to, uh, 
try to use that to our advantage and, you know, capture some of these good athletes and young mm. kids uh, to be able to uh, really enjoy it. And, and also on the, uh, the local level, the club level, just really enjoying more kind of uh, excitement for the game and, and helping people to enjoy it a little bit more. Do you like the, the aspect of maybe the WTA and MTA or ATP, I'm just sitting there thinking of my women's tennis association, men's tennis association. At the club, you're, you're, you're being a club pro, yeah, that's right. not a broadcaster there for just 10 <laughs> seconds, pal. ATP had WTA getting together. Do you like that? You, you, I'm sure you probably read some things or heard some things about them. You know, maybe one uh, one tour. Do you, do you like that concept or uh, probably better on their own? I actually like it, you know, a lot because uh, it, it's, it's uniform, you know. I mean, it's uh, – it's, it's exciting. It brings people together. I know in uh, Cincinnati, I've been to Cincinnati tournament and they'd had it together, at, you know, and it was really, it was really great. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I thought it was really cool. I don't, you know, financially, I don't know if the ATP or w or want to do it. I think the ATP has a little bit stronger presence in terms of uh, the attendance and things like that. But, uh, but you look at the grand slams. I mean, it's just so exciting when everybody's together and you got, you have this, uh, you know, uniformity of who, you know, there's, there's no, there's all inclusion. There's mm. all, uh, you know, you know, respect for both tours. There's, you know, excitement, there's different stories. There's, I mean, it's just, it's just a lot more fun to, uh, see all of the people playing, you know, um, together and kind of enjoying that. And I think that would help, uh, you know, sponsorship and things like that. Cause people would uh, really pr uh, appreciate kind of being together with both, you know, men and women. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good good answer right there. Well, tell us one more time where we can get in get in touch with you. Yeah, people, people want right people there. want to come visit yep. you. Where are they going? To give us a yeah. quick plug. Where are they going to find uh, uh, you and your daughter? You know, hitting balls. I'm and, at Alice Beach. Yep. It's Lila Lila Middleton yeah. at Alice Beach. You know, yeah. uh, we're down here on 30A, mm -hmm. having a good time, and uh, really, it's good it's a good place to be. And we I appreciate y'all having us on. We're really uh, really. Uh, honored to be here and, ha and be on the on the podcast we loved having you you guys are b both so delightful and i can just feel it that every day is daddy daughter bring your kid to work day over there and i uh, i love it and i'm uh, so proud of you lila i can't wait to see you yeah. in itfs and national stuff and uh wishing you guys all the best tj yeah you're delightful big thanks man Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Hey, no, thank, thank you, you, thank you for your time. You, you know, for a guy who was worried about uh, talking, we've almost, <laughs> we were almost at two hours. Yeah. That's, that's why I wanted to cut it off because I know it's getting late no. later in the uh, Florida area right there. It's coming up on 10 o'clock our time, 11 o'clock your time. So I'm we'll central. have you back. Oh, central. you're central too. They're in the, they're in this oh, part oh, of Florida. They're, oh, yeah. they're on the north end. That's yeah. right. Okay. Well, yeah. when, when the kid goes to Lake Worth, that's right. Eastern time. I gotcha. Bet. That's Eastern time. But right. Yeah. But I'm you're talking too much. I had too many stories. You're the best, man. That was fun. Thank, thank you, TJ. We really appreciate your time. Right, yeah, you. Lila, right, appreciate that. Guys. Also, we need to get Courtney back next time. Yeah, we, we need, absolutely. We need absolutely. some absolutely. other stories. We need some Any other time. stories about you. Let's do <laughs> let's do Middleton's part two one of these yeah, days. We will part yeah. two and get Mark Kyle in, involved. Oh, as well. that would be funny. That would be good. I right. yeah. love it. Well, TJ, yeah. have a great night, and we'll look forward to seeing you. We're going to be getting out there. We're down there, what, tomorrow? Murphy Murphy, Murphy Bed. Murphy uh, bed. Uh, we have a gig. Uh, Murphy Bed. Yeah, okay. Um, I got Alice I'm Beach. the sheets on right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good night. We appreciate right. you. Good Thanks, night. TJ. Good night, bud. Right. Take good care. Night. Keep in touch. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that was episode 70 and a 70. lot of fun, man. We that ran was right really through good. That yeah. yeah. We had, had a great time. That yeah. was a lot of fun. Mr. Middleton. So Coach Middleton, as they say, probably down in, in the Florida Panhandle. Yeah, right? yeah. in the R Riviera. Yes. The, the, is that, uh, do they call that the Redneck Riviera? I think it used to be the Redneck Riviera. Now it's just the, I think <laughs> the it's Riviera. just the Riviera. Yeah. All right. So, all right. so, so we uh, say uh, sign off here for, for a couple of seconds? sign off, yes. All right. We'll, we'll get uh, Jimmy Campbell, Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. James, did you say James Frank? James Frank, Frank Campbell. Campbell. There we go. There he is right there. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to Season 1, Episode 7 0. 70 episodes. Wow, that's hard to believe, isn't Not it? Not bad, buddy. The Bathonet Podcast. Join us next week as we'll be talking with Lord Byron Frezzo. Byron Frezzo is yes. amazing. I yes. can't wait. He's originally from Guyana. Yes. Uh, northeast sort of tip, I guess you could say, of South America. He is so is that wonderful. Central? Is that Central Time Zone? I think they may be east of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, I they might be the east, next day. Yeah. <laughs> it might be ours, but it's probably. But uh, Byron's remarkable. USAPA. 
head referee. Yes. And he's involved with Onyx. Uh, on it. Onyx. Onyx. Yeah. O-N-I-X. Onyx. Yeah. Onyx Pickleball. Uh, and with uh, PPA and APP. He's down with APP. Right. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. You think he'll say? He'll, yeah. You think he'll say it? Yes. Yeah, you know me. You yeah. think he'll say it? I think he will. Let's see. <laughs> Tune in next week, yeah, folks. Lord Byron, he, he's he's great. He'll be a great guest. We had him on the Texas Open with us over at Texmex Productions right. uh, about six weeks ago, yeah. eight weeks ago, something like yeah, that. Yeah, when we broadcast yep. uh, live from the Texas Open, uh, we were in the booth and he joined us and rolled for three hours. Oh, easily. I so mean, hopefully just we'll like just this. go two hours. Yep. With yep. you. Right. And then uh, also join us on Wednesday evening. Eight o'clock on our at the net Instagram page, right? You Talking bet. some tennis shorts, right? Tennis shorts. What's in tennis shorts of Craig Bell? What's in there? <laughs> two it's legs. Nothing. Two, two legs. questions. Right. Two pockets. Right. One topical. One uh, uh, pulled out of a hat. Improv. That's kind of where we chill and grill, basically. Chilling and grill and tennis shorts, we right grill there. Grill each other a bit. All right. Well, and lastly. Thanks for everybody for for watching. We still have some people watching us at six viewers it. right there. Thank you all for <laughs> for ch- for chiming in. Appreciate that from a cold and blustery Dallas, Texas. It is. Texas, isn't so it? thanks yeah. for joining us live. And if you're joining us taped on a on a podcast provider, thank yep. you for that too. Yep. Subscribe, follow, like, share it, and you know you know you you know the thing. Come right. on, man. Share it. Share away. We we like your peeps. Hopefully they'll like us. And that's